I'm like a hippie in my heart. I want to like and lay in a field, talk about the clouds. Cause I feel like that's like a in stream of consciousness. That's an experience, you know? I don't want to look at clouds on my phone and then scroll past them. There's a social platform and like posting my sh- and like status updates, like, oh, I'm feeling sick today. <laughs> it's like, no one gives a f-. At least in my mind, I don't Dude, think so. <laughs> you're so wrong, actually. <laughs> Violence is only acceptable in like self-defense. Then I had the idea, like, uh, I was like, should we kill Hitler though? Right to hell with you. <laughs> Straight to hell with you. So I didn't know who the f- he was. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, this isn't like I'm not like, yeah, but you guys don't know. I'm like, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? We don't f- know that. Sh- <laughs> we don't know shit, y'all. Bro, he was just a cool black guy. The same reason I like watching Denzel Washington. Same reason we voted for Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just have like a combine for presidents? They should have their IQ like displayed publicly. Or not. Like as a stat, height, weight, or IQ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> height, weight, age, IQ. Like, oh my God, I could have a life where I'm like, everything is really intense and awesome and makes sense and is connected and people respect me for it. Or I can be like, what, a drug addict? Both of those things are on the table. That's f- crazy. That's f- crazy. <laughs> Bro, for real. Like, if you're not able to cultivate the good life, then, like, the bad life is right there waiting for you, bro. Motherfuckers on the side of the street. God, rolling onto the overpasses and shit. It's like, dude. I don't think I'll ever stop being sensitive. That shit is jarring. You see a homeless person, that shit should jar you. It's that like, should be jarred. <laughs> you should be jarred. Yeah. Like, holy shit. <laughs>happy that she's there you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and so like she went and practiced uh, her set three times in a row before she went and filmed it in san antonio just because like and then they were like talking about the idea that san antonio is a chill place to just go run material because um like you could definitely get on stage and it's like big city it's outside of your normal like market if you're in austin all the time but big city you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. So, I thought that was cool. That's right. Yeah, I was like, dude, if they could just, like, get in the habit of doing that. Making San Antonio a hub, baby. Hub it up. Hubby. Yeah. Hubbyville, bro. We're right next to Austin. Texas is a hub, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why, why move to Texas? It's like, we got a whole bunch of shit out here, man. It's crazy. We got guns. We got Joe Rogan. What else do you want? We're chilling. We're having a good time. We got cowboys. We got horses. We got land. We got land. You can drive for six hours and you're still in Texas, baby. We got two football teams and three basketball teams. Mm-hmm. We're good. We We're rocking. Two baseball teams. We're That's rocking. A crazy amount of sport teams per state land, but mm-hmm. for yeah, for one state. Yeah. 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 Texas got it all. I love Texas. Yeah, I heard of Joe Rogan. They were talking about somebody said at first if you were too nervous to go to New York, it's like just go to Austin, man. <laughs> it's like come because I guess like New York's oversaturated and super intense, and the killers are there, so mm-hmm. you could come to Austin and it was still big city. Lots of room to work and grow, maybe a little less room, but also like less talent maybe, or it was just a little slept on over here. So yeah. A little more chill. A little more chill. Because it, w- it wasn't that hot spot, you know what I'm saying? But now it's becoming more of a hot spot. Big time well, over the last couple of years. Austin specifically. hmm Yeah. But Texas in general, it's always good, gets good vibes. Like when we're in Vegas, be like, where are you from? Yeah, we're people from international hub, you know, people from all over the world go to Vegas all the time. You can be people from Australia, people from Asia, different parts of Europe, or uh, whatever, Africa, <laughs> anywhere, everywhere. But it, we're like, oh, yeah, we're from Texas. It's, it's almost an immediate, it's like a positive reception almost every time. Yeah. It's like, oh, hey. Texas, cool. Yeah. Fucking, I, I forget who they reference or what do they say? Rick Perry? <laughs> Not Rick Perry. Rick James, bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you talking about the governor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Some governor of the reference. Perry, right? I want to say, yeah, I want to say that that's the name, but that was years ago. Either way, I'm, I'm so not tapped in. Abbott? Is it Abbott or <laughs> so governor? not tapped in at all. I don't know at all, to any of the fucking Tough. local politics. God, I'm sorry. We just trust Texas to be Texas. I just trust God. For, <laughs> <laughs> for mostly. I remember in college being like, Justin, like, don't you fucking, are you worried about Donald Trump being, maybe getting elected? Or like, what are you, are you going to get out there and vote? Like, what are you doing about the, all this, all this blah? Yeah. You're just like, what who blah? Who? who who's blah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? You're like, life has got its own. I don't, I don't even give an extra stress to stuff that doesn't impact me. When's the last time a politician impacted me? Directly. Yeah. And it's, some people would be like, <gasps> all the policies and all that shit. And, and some Action. people would say that's a really irresponsible way to think about politics, but I just don't, you were just so right. You were just so right in that moment. And you still are so it's just, right. It's true. Or, you know, like we're all the, we're all just common people trying to get by, trying to fucking 
buy bread, bread and milk and eggs. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just get gas and go to work or do what we got to do. Take care of the kids. For the most part. For the most part, it's what we're doing day to day. We don't really have enough time to be diving into the fucking policies and the truth about who's doing what, foreign relations, where the money's going. Yeah, you got to really so many fucking... worries. There's so many topics to, you know, yeah. give your attention to. An educated voter is, um, that's an interesting idea in today, 2024. Like how many voters are educated voters compared to like in 1980 being an educated voter wasn't such a, I don't, there was like less, in, less total information. So when you went for your politics information, I think it was more streamlined to you. Like this guy represents this, this, and this, this guy represents this, this, and this. And, uh, this is this guy's history and this is this guy's history. And I think X and I think Z. I think that was more straightforward, but now it's kind of like, how do you even keep up? What do you know about Kamala Harris? What do you know about her? <laughs> I know she was on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, me too. I know Donald Trump's been on many podcasts over the last couple of weeks. Dude, it's honestly a very damning piece of evidence. Well, when I tell people about our business, half of the people are like, that's tight. Pos- just like, cool, man. I'm so mm-hmm. happy. Being your own boss is sick. Opening a business, sick. They're just like, juice. Congrats. Don't need to hear anything else about it, you know? Uh-huh. Then of the remainder half, half of that half is like, you know... You're doing social media and you're in the podcast for the social media as like a marketing firm. That's like frontline, dude. That's like, that's some, you're like ahead of your time. If you can like master that and be on top of that. And that's like right on the, the edge and the cusp of current technology and what's hap- what's really happening, you know? Yeah. Trending how, how we interface with social media or with each other, you know? Right. And sometimes if you're too new, people can't adopt it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's too, it's too blurry. They can't see it. That's some of the feedback I've gotten was like, you're you're so in the in the new wave. Like, do you get any like people that aren't ready to understand that? You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But then like the last remaining quarter, they're like more or less want to say podcast. They're like, ah, it's like disbelief. It's like, well, it's like they see a hole in the business, which is cool. I'm open to that. Sure. Like, tell me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they're saying, you know, that podcasts aren't like that it's a fad or that they're not as big as that they are or that they're not you know why would a business need a podcast you know what i'm saying and then i'm like dude trust me podcast pretty fucking huge <laughs> did, trust you actually, me. did you see donald trump and kamala harris on a podcast last week mm. why do you think they did that why do you think they did that mm-hmm. it's gonna be common commonplace now going forward you know it's like last election i don't think that was going on maybe maybe it was on a, on a smaller scale who knows but eight years ago definitely not but I think now, and then every four years going forward for the next ever, that's going to be the run. That's going to be the the media run. Instead of doing CNN and some talk shows and oh. radio shows or whatever, you're going to go on different people's podcasts, different influencers and curators, whatever, however they produce content, you're going to tap into those people, tap into their audiences, whichever demographics map up or whichever demographics overlap with important demographics for certain states or whatever. Like, well, they have a lot of followers in fucking... Idaho or whatever, or in fucking Illinois or in Florida. Like we got to get this influence. We got to get on their podcast. We got to make a good impression. It's like way more that that's the thinking now. That's the thinking now. And like the people who are like on the forefront of that thinking, they're thinking like podcasts or like a getting into the, the stream is just, it's, 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 you can't even, you can't fight it anymore. It's, it's, it's a necess- necessity to have some sort of social media presence, some sort of, touch tap into the social media platforms that everyone's using billions literally billions of motherfuckers billions with a b multiple billions on like facebook and then there was one i learned about yesterday it was called uh, wechat i think it's china primarily it's like i'm not sure what percentage i would say it's like over three quarters of their users are from china but it's like a crazy app that has everything it's like one app and then inside that app there's like thousands of mini apps that you can use to like Uber Eats or buy something or order something or make a reservation or do a review or whatever. It's like its own subset of crazy interfacing apps, like an all one stop shop kind of thing. It's like, that's just the fucking way that we're moving now, baby. It's like, if you're not tapped into any of those at all, like nowadays, it's like, you're so fucked. (laughs) You're so fucked. Every, every company is opening up a social media branch. That's going to be or already is like kind of a subset of their marketing or advertising budget that's already been around for fucking forever. Radio ads and fucking newspaper ads forever. Yeah. Billboards and shit. A lot of people have TV commercials. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like, why, you know? Get their name out there, trying to make an impression, trying to... It's like they need it, you know? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. You need to get out there. And now it's just like everything's going on or on, ever since online came about, that, that, that's been the direction. And now even more so specifically online has turned into these apps and this social media shit. And it's a weird hub. It's a, it's a strange thing that we're doing as a people. It is strange. It's efficient. I guess it's cool to communicate and exchange information like instantaneously almost. I think one of the reasons we're still doing it is because there's negative ramifications for not doing it. Not just because we like doing it. Hmm. Like what do you mean? Like not being on social media has, you're like out of the loop, you know, like you're not going to know what people are talking about as often and your references are going to be off and that's going to have like negative social consequences for your like friendships and also just like. It's not catching jokes and yeah, like social, social watering hole mishaps. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Everyone knows to be laughing at Hawk Tua and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to be laughing at, oh, you never know any of the things, you know, uh -huh. tapped in. And then there's going to be like a separation of like, yeah, we don't really, I mean, they don't even never know what's going on. Like, you know, I feel like left out almost, mm -hmm. or like looked at differently. For sure. For sure. You got to not give a fuck though. If you're not, if you're not on those platforms, you probably don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Right. You would be one of those people. Right. Yeah. Right. But just, just that to say that I think that that's like some of the looping that has made social media so integrated into our life is that there are like just negative ramifications for not being on social media in the sense that it's just so integrated that you're kind of left out. If you're not doing it and mm. uh, like, for instance, I don't know, like, because I don't think you have to do it. Like, I don't want to be on social media personally. Like, I don't want my whole life to revolve around it. But like it, well, now that I'm in a business of it, that that's, I open a business of it because of, just because of how fucking unavoidable it is, <laughs> because I can't not do it. And even though I'd love There's to no not options. do it, I'm like a hippie in my heart. I want to like fucking lay in a field and like talk about the clouds because i feel like that's like a fucking stream of consciousness you know what i'm saying like that's an experience you know uh, i don't want to look at clouds on my phone and then scroll past them like this is not an experience you know what i'm saying this is not a stream of consciousness now, i do get inspired sometimes by my phone but it's like there's just so many things going on one it's fake almost all of it's fake yeah a lot of it's dressed up embellished yes to the to the fullest so then when you go into your natural life and it doesn't look like instagram like, what if your subconscious expectation of that moment doesn't get met because it doesn't look like it does on Instagram? But that's like real life right in front of you. That's like actually happening. That's like yeah. soil that could actually actually grow a plant. It's not just dirt. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm. fucking fertilized with magic. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking, you know, there's this temptation to think that to pull out your phone and look at something else because this isn't as interesting. Yeah. Or to take a picture of this so that you can put it on the phone. And thus ignoring that experience that's there, that like stream of consciousness that's there in that moment. And instead you're going to go to the artificial world so that other people, you know, Drake said it in the song. He's like, take pictures so you could post later just so you could still look like you're on, on the road or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. maintain it's crazy. A, yeah, maintain a persona. Yeah, dude. All of the fucking temptation to, to do that and not just engage with life like I think we're supposed to. That's like why I don't want to be on social media. Like I feel like it's like coke. Coca-Cola, sorry. <laughs> it's like a sugared soda. Very similar. It's like, ah, just don't don't drink sugared sodas. Yeah. The, yeah, there's, there's something, I, I feel the same the same way in my spirit of spirits, you know, just like the, at the foundation. I was like, I, I don't want to be on that or like be, I guess, giving more energy and attention to that than I think it needs. And then the amount that I think it needs is very minimal, or especially for my personality. I can see the benefits for others as far as like keeping up with family updating people on, on stuff on stuff but like i don't even post you know what i'm saying like on facebook like i haven't no right like i haven't interfaced with the any of the social media platforms like maybe a little bit here and there but very very minimally like maybe once or twice a year a couple times a year <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I'm saying like a birthday thank you for all the happy birthdays that came through right and then a fucking like when i proposed to my fiance like i put that on there nice and it's like aside from that it's like there's not many other situations or instances where I feel the need to be like I kind of need I need to share this. Yeah, but that's just my personality type though. That's like just me in a nutshell. But I think that it is so for some people it definitely has the opportunity to be like beneficial at least for that just for keeping up with family and friends, maybe news sources. But that, that's what I, I use it for something. I use it for more like that, like information gathering. More that's what or less. I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But like even then, like it's still like a, it's still in, in my life. I'm still, I still, I still have it. I use it more so for this type of information gathering and not even, not even like commenting or posting or like engaging really. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of just like 
scrolling through and seeing what people are talking about, what's happening. Yes. What's happening in sports, what's happening in news, what's happening, whatever. Yes, bro. Whatever your interests are. But like as far as interfacing with it as a social platform and like posting my shit and like status updates, like, oh, I'm feeling sick today. <laughs> it's like, no one gives a fuck. At least in my mind, I don't Dude, think so. <laughs> you're so wrong, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because there have been people who post, I'm sick today, and then mm. you don't comment on their post, and they're like, you know, well, you didn't see my Facebook post? I'm not feeling well. <laughs> they try to invite them out to the bar later. They're like, bro, I mean, what are you, you fucking just don't keep up with my Facebook anymore? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That That's kind of me being a little bit mean, but in another sense, like my dad for a while was legitimately like, oh, I posted on Facebook. You didn't see it on Facebook? I posted the picture of the thing I'm trying to tell you about. Come on, what are you talking about? Oh, God damn it, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'll send you the picture. Okay, okay, yeah. So, like, they're, like even in a smaller way, it's still, like, this pressure to, like, what what is it that we're doing there? Hmm. Right? What is it that we're doing right? there? Right? I've had that question ever since it came about, like, in middle school. I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to, what, what, yeah, what are we trying to do? Express ourselves? Share communication? I remember at the beginning, I wanted to post, like, fucking... Sometimes I felt like my voice needed to be heard. And it might have just been like virtue signaling, or this was early Facebook, but it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like what? What are, you, what are you saying? Something would happen, and there'd be a big riled up feeling of maybe they'll come for like our guns or something. Okay. And I'd be like, just so everyone knows. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> just to make it absolutely crystal clear okay. to all of the public. I was wondering. I disagree strongly <laughs> with the current narrative <laughs> that we should be taking away our Second Amendment. The Second Amendment protects the First Amendment, and the First Amendment is what makes us America. Mm-hmm. And if you don't support what makes us America, I don't know if you're a true patriot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> What are you doing here? With that being said, there's also a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> conspiratorial views about what happened on this date and time. The the, okay. the the bullets don't match what they say they were. You know, the phone footage shows a different narrative than what they said. And I would just like go through and like say shit like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like being a fucking good stand up person. You know what I'm saying? Almost like a journalist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm here with the facts, yeah. y'all. Yeah, right. Like that's important. I thought it was. I thought it, it was is. to in it all is. the in all the chatter. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, but I, I don't think it's important to post that shit on Facebook. I don't. I'm feeling sick today. <laughs> That's not important. But it's like here's the facts and here's how they don't line up. Here's some legitimate information and value. Here's the thing: is I don't even care anymore. I don't oh, fucking care <laughs> about what you guys can think. Whatever the fuck you want. I, like I don't care to. I don't care to tell you what I think you should be thinking. Mm-hmm. And I guess I used to care more about like. Man, there there's just so much bullshit going on in this room. I'm gonna have to fucking say some truth, you know. I'm gonna have to fucking say, Hey guys. <laughs> yeah. You, you heard about Tower Nine? Yeah. yeah. You heard about Building Seven? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's uh the 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 nine eleven conspiracy. Bringing in some shit. Yeah, but just being like, you know extra information. Right. Because I guess we would talk about all that shit. Just what it seems like it's not going on so much anymore, but more like in the two thousand five to two thousand fifteen. There was more times where like something would happen and everybody would be talking about it and South Park would make an episode about it and we'd all have this like opposing view between like conservatives and liberals. But like that doesn't really happen. It's, I haven't seen that in a while where it's we, you know, a school shooting happens and then we get all we're keeping the guns. We're taking your guns or like a, I was thinking about that the other day. What were you going to say? Like a big abortion case, uh-huh. like a big public thing that makes everyone have to pick a side and then we get all Roe v. Wade. Right. They took that away in Texas. <laughs> Round up. Yeah, like we're, we haven't been doing that. <laughs> Our feathers haven't been ruffled in a minute as a society. Or do you think so? P. Diddy should ruffle them. But That's pretty ruffling. We've got it wrapped up. That's a good ruffle though. It should, ru- <laughs> it should ruffle your feathers that that much shit is going on. With that many connected people? With someone that you know, maybe you don't know him that well. That's a household heard, name. You've heard his name. You've definitely heard his fucking name. So that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're hopefully trending in that direction of feather, feather ruffling yeah. as far as information that's coming out. But I was thinking about that the other day. Is like we haven't had a, like a George Floyd or like, you know what I'm saying, a school shooting in a, I feel like a minute. Or maybe not. I'm sure it's, it's but there have been going on shit like that, police brutality and Whatever the fuck else. I guess we've been having more war talk recently, right? Ukraine, Russia, and fucking Israel, Palestine. Yeah. That's been more filling the narrative the last couple right. of years. But it's kind of detached from us, so we're not mm-hmm. we're not real riled up about it. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to understand what's going on in Israel. Yeah. And with the Ukraine too. 
Well, I guess like in high school, I probably would. I would have like the viewpoint where it's like Ukraine was a part of this thing, uh, NAFTA or whatever trade union they're a part of. And then Russia didn't like it because of this reason. So then Russia wanted to invade to try to make this happen. Like, I know that there's a reason why they invaded, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I guess part of it was too, was I felt like I needed to know exactly what was going on so that when I got into these arguments that I could be like very factual and be like, that's not true. This is true. But it's because I don't care to get into those arguments anymore. I'm like, <laughs> war is bad. Okay. okay. Killing people's bad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should be more educated. Can we just leave it at that? Yeah. Can we just leave it at that? It's pretty simple. Right. It seems like the Fuck. same thing with Israel because Israel's getting attacked. I'm pretty sure from like bad people. That That's all I know. <laughs> no sad, brother. No Leave sad. Him alone. Wars, <laughs> Leave the fuck alone, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone, man. Come on, man. We're all just chilling. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking weird, bro. Fucking war, dude. Come on, man. Why are we killing each other? For beliefs, control, money. Why would you kill someone? You know? What the fuck? One thing about directly what? opposing beliefs that come when it comes down to it or to how do I go forward? It's like, no, I think we should go forward in this direction. It's like, no, I think we should go forward in this direction. It's like, well, we literally have like diametrically opposed directions here. Who's going to go forward? And it's like, I kill you. <laughs> and then we go in my direction. <laughs> oh. oh, it's fucking crazy, man. We're weird creatures. Yeah. The origins of war. Why? Why? There's a couple. Well, okay. World War II is... A patriot's favorite example of why you go to war, and it's because there's a bad guy. That's a pretty bad guy. Yeah, mass genocide. That's pretty bad. Yeah. We, should, we should probably stop that. People love that because he's he's trying to go in that direction. You know what I'm saying? Like we should go this way. It's like ah, we shouldn't go that way. That's a bad way to go down, sir. Well, the, the, the fuck are you doing? One of the reasons that the the fucking the 1970 Americans love that so much is because, uh, it's because. But the war is wrong people would say, like, the answer is never to, like, shoot people, is to fucking invade countries and bomb people and shit like that. That's that's never the answer. Like, in a really um, fucking libertarian society, it's like, well, if you're going in that direction, it's like, well, I'll just go in my direction, and I don't really care what you do. But in mm. the instance of World War II, they couldn't – you couldn't keep going in Hitler's direction because it was like they were invading other countries and making other countries communist which would also propagate this like horrible evil like any country that became communist could end up having a Mussolini or a Hitler we got to like we have to keep it we have to, we had to keep it uh democratic systems with like voting and shit what's that called is that democracy yeah yeah right mm -hmm. that was like our reason why we were like validated in sending people and invading and dropping nukes and shit like that was because we were like, we have to protect democracy at all costs. But I think that the, well, with what you were saying, just like if someone's going one way and then we're going the other way, it's like, we don't have to, I don't have to stop you from going the I way you're going. Saying. Yeah. You know, but with that guy, we had to stop him. Mm -hmm. So we needed M16s and <laughs> grenades and tanks and shit. Like yeah. America gets yeah, to be bro. really cool. Because there was such a bad guy at one point. It's to be in time. the good guys. Exactly. With dope fucking shit. <laughs> fucking jets and shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's because some people would be like, hey, it's not cool to like that shit. And they're like, well, what do you want? A fucking Hitler running around? You mm -hmm. want a fucking. You like the mass genocide of Jewish people? Yeah. Just that, that, where the fuck's that come from, bro? Because it's, it's got to be pure evil. Because I think I, I ran into a. Uh, I think it was Russell Brand. He was talking to Tucker Carlson. <laughs> was that you were gonna say? I ran into an evil dude. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a real evil motherfucker. Can I have that big one? I had to slay him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I told it was oh yeah, it was uh, Russell Brand, and I think he was talking to Tucker Tucker Carlson. But uh, Tucker Carlson was more or less just trying to say like violence is never the answer, more or less. Like violence, violence is only acceptable in like self defense. And then I was like thinking about that, mulling that idea over a little bit. I was like, I think it's, I think that's about right. But then I had the idea, like, a, I was like, should we kill Hitler though? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was like literally the example that came to my mind. I've had the same, like, I was evaluating the thought of love is bigger than everything, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like, where is there an instance where I can't love someone then? You know what I'm saying? It's like, where's, where's that instance? And then the thought that came to my head was like a terrorist on a plane. If he's got like a bomb on him. I can't love that guy right now. I can't be like, hey, man, are you okay? Like, I have to fucking shoot him. 
You know what I'm saying? If I had a gun on this imaginary plane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Strapped up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because I wrote that bar that was like, uh, if I can't show you love, then I'll show you how we cut throats. But then I was like trying to justify that bar. I was like, wait, wait, when can I not show someone love? Hitler. Hard guy to show some love to. <laughs> at, at his peak? <laughs> peak hit? Peak hittles? How do, what, nah. What's the Christian thing to do? I don't know. That's my question. That's what I'm thinking. That's, that's what I was kicking around the can of. Because yeah. I was like, I agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think it's right fully. Because then I, I, I got to a place with it where I was thinking about, yeah, coming or like the example of it's, it's only ex- uh, reasonable or acceptable, makes sense, and it's like self-defense. It's like, why else? You definitely, you definitely need it in that scenario. You know what I'm saying? But then I was thinking about it like in a meta abstract kind of realm. And I think I was like, took it out a little bit. It's like, okay, well, then what happens when you encounter the spirit that requires you to need self-defense? Like, what's that spirit? What's the thing that would need me to be self-defensive? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, what's the thing that's generating somebody and animating them to attack me so that I need to defend myself? Right. It's like, whatever that thing is that's generating that and animating that motion, that action, it's like, what the fuck do we do with that thing? We can't just, we can't just, what the fuck is that? Because I think it's right. Well, you could say it's like evil. Right? Right. You could say that. But that's not helping anything because it's, it's too generic. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, let's say like someone's going to rob you in an alleyway and they've got the knife out and they're like, give me the money, bitch, or I'll <laughs> cut you. And then in their own mind, they've already decided that if you don't immediately pull the wallet out, they're going to cut you. But you don't have your wallet. It's like, you, you're fucked. This guy's just going to stab you. Because in his own mind, he's already came up with a tactic to handle you, maybe trying to handle him. But ultimately, no matter what you do, because you don't have your wallet on you, he's going to stab you. What level criminal is this guy? Is he like a level one criminal? If he's a level one criminal, I could talk him down. If he's like a level 12 criminal, I probably can't. I want to say that um, he is, uh, as he's used drugs so that he could get to the point of no return because he probably can't really do this like all the time. He's not really a clear minded savage. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. just like, he's got kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe he does. Maybe he lost him. Imagine this guy's like semi-homeless mm-hmm. in this picture that I'm painting in my own mind. I love it. I'm here with you. <laughs> he's, just, he's robbing me. Come on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So you're in that position of like, uh, what, what, so th- that would be that, that position that you're talking about where you're, you've now encountered the spirit that wants to like assault you or yeah. like, I, I want to use the word assault. Do harm. Right. Damage. He's willing. What is that? He's willing to stab you. And then he's got so much fear that you might actually stab him that he's willing to kill you in the art of or in the act of trying to rob you. So what I'm saying is some of it is a tumble effect because maybe he was like barely able to entertain the idea of robbing you, then took drugs so that he definitely could entertain the idea of robbing you, commit to it. And then to protect himself because he's so afraid of doing that, he is willing to kill you to, to protect himself. All of that is like results in what we're going to call evil on the back end. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, so then where does he get to the place where he's going to rob you? Yeah. Right? How does he get to that place? Yeah. Yeah, maybe he just needs the money because he needs whatever for whatever fucking reason. Who needs money so bad that they won't just get a job? I didn't have a job for how long? A lot long? of people. I don't know. <laughs> I think a lot of people. Right. So, But some of that is like what's... What makes you desperate enough to to assault mm. someone else's thing mm. results mm. in the mm. evil? It's like desperation or something. Yeah, yeah. The need for survival. Yeah, I feel I, like you're probably a different person. If I you're know starving to death. Tons of people surviving right now that mm. aren't robbing people. I know, like twenty. You know, what I'm saying it's not like mm. two thousand, but it's a lot. So I guess what I'm saying it doesn't it doesn't necessarily justify those actions, but they happen. You know. Mm. Man, I just fucking, you know? Yeah, so, we're all, yeah, so you know? I don't know. It's like... <laughs> what is that shit? What is... Do we kill Hitler? Do we not kill Hitler? What's the What's the right thing There's here? a fucked up direction to take it. Mm-hmm. Is I almost feel like those people aren't like fucking... There's something not like right in their mind. That like... Like what... How is that ever an option? Like I'm just going to rob this guy. Like, how is that ever an option? You know what I'm saying? Hmm, probably a couple things. Maybe like if maybe if you're like around it, or maybe you've seen it, right? You know, it's like a okay, so people do, right? Sure, you know, so maybe it's a little bit of an environment, and then yeah, maybe you just get into a place of desperation. I know, or... I know how, bro. I know how. Okay, I know how. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you ever seen like a fucking cowboy movie where the bad guy is kind of badass? 
<laughs> yeah. You know, and he's just fucking walking in. Wow, give me the money. Let's go. We're fucking doing this. You shut the fuck up. You're crying too much. Get on the horses. We're headed down to Arkansas. Giddy up now. And I see that guy and I'm like, I could do some damage. I could do some fucking damage back in the day. <laughs> Just cowboys rolling around. There's no internet. Barely any cops. Shoot all the cops if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Walk right in. They're probably chilling. They're probably playing cards, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> do whatever you want, pretty much. Yeah. So, but then, but then I have this, I think those thoughts and I'm just like, you know, it's like Roy on Rick and Morty. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. You could just balling out, you know? It's balling out in Red Dead. Going crazy. And then if you robbed enough banks, you'd be rich as fuck. You could have whatever the fuck you wanted. Yeah. You could get like OP in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have done this with their lives. Jesse James. Some people have done this with their lives. Mm-hmm. But there's like a thought that happens that's like, ah, like, I don't want to enter the realm of possibility where anything can happen, where I could do anything to anybody, and anybody could do that to me too. And like, I have to live in this place where like, I'm stealing from people and I got to live with that on my conscience and I got to think about karma in a different way now and I got to like, wonder if I'm going to hell. And like, there's just this line that if you cross it, sure, like Joey Diaz, you can fucking rob people. Like you can rob, he robbed a ton of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I remember hearing Joe talk about that. I've heard like three different stories from Joey where he's really? talking about, and then we stopped over at the thing, and then I hit the, you know, we're going out of town anyways, and they were all high on cocaine, and I, I just ran over and I just robbed them. I, I just took the money from behind the register and I left. They never knew a fucking thing. They probably found out they never told me. Listen, Joe Rogan, oh, I stole a lot of money in my life. I robbed a lot of motherfuckers, Joe Rogan. Yeah, my joy, my, my joy wasn't great. <laughs> Joe, Joe does the best. The best Joe person. hits a good Joey. Oh. Hey, listen, Joe. I can't. I can't. Okay, we can do this forever. This is a good. Listen, cock, cock, cock. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you could just be. You could just do that shit. Yeah, you, you could. Does, does he ever talk about it? Does he talk about like his mindset or like where where that comes from? Because it's like what the. I guess why the fuck not? I guess yeah, being in the energy of fucking GTA, Red Dead Redemption. That's not a well person. I don't think. No, I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> We're willing to throw those people in jail. Those people that cross that line. Yeah, just robbing motherfuckers. That's, yeah. We made laws. We made fucking law and order for this, to for society, communities, to fucking just keep on going and to keep on going. So then I guess the people that would do shit, we, there was enough people doing enough shit that we deemed whatever they're doing, it's like we need to create like a fucking rule book to, to like not let that happen because it disrupts so much of society or whatever the fuck. The, the people, just the everyday, everyday motherfuckers are trying to live. I was trying to get bread, milk, and eggs. Yeah, I was watching The Highwaymen, which is a story about Bonnie, not about Bonnie and Clyde, but it's about Bonnie and Clyde were such a problem that they had, they got Texas Rangers that had been like since phased out of the law. Um, they were using like fucking cars and policemen and stuff like that. This is like, I don't know, 40s or 50s. But then these Rangers were like, used to like ride on like horses and be in the Texas wild plains where there were still like Native Americans that were hostile and like, keep order and like this guy said he'd been shot like 16 times like apparently it was fucking crazy when the rangers were around so then these rangers are like in their 60s 50s 60s and then bonnie and clyde are such a problem that they like come up with this idea to hire these two ex-rangers to like be take them out uh, yeah to take them out nice yeah so they've got like the fbi is this, is that a true story yeah oh tight yeah so they've got the fbi working on it they've got all of the local police departments for all of the crimes happening working on it and then they've also got this other two people coming in and then they don't really want the, the other people are like get the fuck out of here bro like go on down to fucking jacksonville i think i heard they were down there they don't really want them around mm-hmm. but they get hired they go and buy like three thousand dollars worth of guns and they just start fucking being rangers again, bro. <laughs> but the re and then they end up ultimately being the people that take down Bonnie and Clyde. Like they investigate them and they figure out their pattern and they figure out where they're going to be a couple times and they hunt them down. But Bonnie and Clyde were just like going from Texas to like Arkansas to like Kentucky to Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, back to Texas and just making this loop and just doing crime, chilling. They had safe houses set up all over the place. But their parents were back in Texas, and then one of the crew members' parents were in Louisiana. So that's where they ended up, like, pinching down and ultimately finding them, where, like, they figured out some of the secret messages that meant they were coming home. And so they were close a couple times, and then they find them, and then they they kill them. Damn. Um, Yeah, so did they kill them? Like, it came down to a shootout or a standoff? fucking... (laughs) 
like <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde obliterated or them. The Rangers. The Bonnie and Clyde. Oh wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like the Rangers did that to Bonnie and Clyde. Uh-huh. They fucking just like just spraying them. Die. Like 50, 60 bullets. It was nuts. I don't know if that was an exaggeration in the movie, but was there? Yeah, was it a dramatization? Was there any attempt at just an arrest? No, <laughs> no. Because I guess how, the name of the law is fucking. Because how it plays out. Well, one of the major motifs in the movie is they keep saying he's not gonna, he's not gonna get arrested. No, yeah, he's, they're gonna go go out with a bang. Yeah, like his dad says that to him. The governor says it to them. Like it keeps coming up in the movie. They're like, he's not fucking gonna let you arrest him. But that could be a lie. That could be a lie that they're feeding us propaganda. And maybe we shouldn't have shot that guy. Maybe I don't know, but but the thing, the reason there was such a problem is because like systematically, like the, like I'm talking about, they had systematically figured out how to do whatever the fuck they want. Because the cops didn't have like fucking even really radios that worked yet, so they couldn't like communicate with each other and like link up and share details and like you'd leave a jurisdiction and now you're just in another jurisdiction and you're just in a sedan. And nobody fucking know <laughs> the fuck. There's no fucking license plate numbers yet. Like looking them up uh, and shit. Uh, when was this? What time period? Like 40s or 50s? Damn. Yeah, not that long ago. Damn, ain't nobody doing shit. They, they just do whatever they want. And they became like superstars. So people were like tripping because they were like these flashy gangsters, and she was kind of like this American icon, like sexy big on lady. The news. Yeah. And uh, they had nice cars and suits, and they at one point like they're in the hometown. And then, like, they get seen in the store, and then these people just start mobbing in the streets, like, oh, my God, sorry my shit. Dude, the killers. But it, the idea of what I'm saying is this really badass superstars. outlaw is, uh-huh. like, fucking tight. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh-huh. like, represents the... Man, you said it when you were, like, we need order. We installed order. It's, like, the idea that we could thrive in chaos and just be fucking superstars <laughs> it's like i think that idea is like real or prevalent or it's something i think maybe in the back of all of our minds mm-hmm. like i could just be a fucking wild cannonball and get it all done and ace everything and it'd be great i don't need this organization or these things tying me down yeah yeah it's fucking crazy bro yeah like who's it's all just people determining what's legal and illegal but i guess for good reasons to try to maintain law and order and try to maintain a thriving society yeah. it all makes sense it's all placeholders we're all trying to do our best but the Bible says thou shalt not kill. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it actually says it like that. That might just be my own dramatization. I think that's what it says. I think it means murder is, is what I've heard, uh, interpretation or a Hebrew. I've actually heard Pastor Ed talk about that, right? Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but. <laughs> right. Okay. That's it definitely says that, self-defense. Though. Yeah. Because, yeah, I guess if, if if it came down to it, it's like, if it's either you're going to kill me or I got to kill you. It's like, what the fuck? The question is, is, are you not going to heaven if you kill that guy? In self-defense? Yeah. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe you're still good, right? You're still good? That, that's, that, that, that'd be kind of fucked up, if not. He'd be like, I told you. I told you right here. <laughs> it's a, it's a I couldn't get much more plain. Right to hell with you. Straight to hell with you. <laughs> but no, I don't think it's that. I mean, obviously, the whole idea of accepting Jesus Christ is that we will sin and still hopefully, you know, I mean, will be granted access into heaven through Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Jesus got your back if you have to got to mark that guy. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. It's just fucked up. But there's... Here, I have a... I don't think you should kill, but I think that you should have some things that you would kill for. And I don't say that lightly, mm-hmm. but I think you should have some things that you would kill for and some things that you would die for. Yeah. But you don't. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. But, but you would. Yeah. That hopefully you have enough finesse to get yourself in and out of situations where you wouldn't have to kill or die for these things that you would kill or die for. Hopefully, but you would. And should you be in that situation, you would. And I think that's a, that's just a mechanism that would push someone to where they need to go. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've thought about that. I've literally had that same like or like this same string of thought. Like the idea of, I guess in, in, in relation more to like family members. You know what I'm saying? Like your, yeah. your like your parents and like your children. Like you would kill and die for those people. Right. It's like those are like the most are like to kill someone to take, to take life. It's like you can't be doing that. You can't just be doing that all willy nilly. No. Nah. It's like one of the worst things you could do with your time <laughs> with your time here is the kills take the end someone else's time it's like one of the worst things you could do with your time yeah, it's it right up right up there it's gotta be up there with like torturing somebody <laughs> it's like, yeah. fuck that so yeah. it's like 
yeah, but, but, to, but to be committed enough to say, like, I love this thing enough or, like, I care about this thing so much that I would – like if, if something were to get in the way of this, if the equal and opposite force were to come in and bring that killer energy towards this thing, like, I would have to – I would stop that at any means necessary, whether it means – whether that, that be, like, with my own life or taking that life. Yeah. I'd be willing to put myself there. Like, I would be willing to do the worst thing you could do with yourself. Yeah. To save – for love or, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's right. what it really comes down to. Yeah. You're fucking your mom and your, your, your kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, that's where this thought stemmed from. Yeah, right? Oh, I would fuck someone up. I would <laughs> fuck someone up. I was like, that's kind of fucked up how bad I would fuck someone up. Oh, fucking no thought. No second questions, bro. Put me in. Bring the, bring the orange jumpsuit with you. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, mm-hmm. God, dude, this thing means that I have a higher likelihood of going to jail. Because mm. there's not a lot of crimes I would commit. There's not a lot of things to... I could do, yeah, that life could do to me that would make me care so much to act in that way. Right. Even if it were to myself, I would be like... Still wouldn't want to send myself to jail over something that happened to me. I would just, like, get over it mentally. I feel like that would be the struggle. Just try to deal with it. Yeah. But, yeah, no, for your kid, though, I mean, yeah. fucking. Dude, yeah, this is a perfect segue. We got fucking another member in the family. Fucking bring it in on up. We got official dad. We talked about it on the pod with uh, Ace and Nick. That was a month or two ago, maybe oh, yeah. weeks and weeks ago. But now it's officially locked it in. Baby's touchdown. Feet on the ground. Lungs got air in them, crying, pooping, eating. Healthy baby, my dog is in the dad zone. Let's go. Let's do it. We're here. Dad zone, baby. Arrived. It's yeah. awesome, bro. Oh, baby now? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, kill for that thing. Yeah, for real. Fucking murder for that thing. It's nuts. Yeah, the stuff they say is definitely real. Like, one thing is after you have the baby, it feels way better than before you have the baby because just like a lot of nervous energy. It, like, it's to the point where it's like, can we just start playing the game already? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like too much build up for the game. <laughs> like, when's this kickoff going to commence? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But, uh, so yeah, um, I feel like, you know, like I fell in love with her in the sense where it's like, I feel that connection. I feel like, like I think about her all the time. Like even in just, I'm like dri- driving on the highway. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking these thoughts like, what was my mom? My mom definitely said she would fuck some people up over me and Grace. She definitely expressed that she was like a polar bear. It's like, they're chill. But if you fuck with their kids, then you die. And I was like, that's funny that she said that because I feel that thing to some degree, you know? Mm-hmm. Where you're like watching a crime documentary on Netflix and you're like, that was my daughter though. <laughs> some parental ferocity, bro. It's just in there. I'd be a ghillie in the mist <laughs> from a mile away. Bro, people, that's like the the one. That's the one. That's like the one relationship most people I would say if they had to, or they were asked... Is there anybody in your life that you would kill for or die for? And who is that person? I think anyone who answered yes, the answer would probably be their child, one of the children or something like that. Or maybe vice versa, like your parent, if you don't have a child yet. The other thing is the investment is just too high. After, I mean, you know, my baby's been alive like less than a week. I'm so invested. (laughs) Can you imagine after like 10 years? It's like you're so invested in that thing that it's like, and, and we do have a proclivity to care more about other people than ourselves. So I think that there, you might not shoot somebody for yourself, even though I think you would in the right situation, but you would definitely stop someone from attacking someone else that you love. Mm-hmm. There's that urge to protect. So that's really just like, like I'm saying, like you'll stick up for someone else before you stick up for yourself most most of the time. I just think that's true, you know? Mm-hmm. But so there's definitely that outward expression of like, it's all, the investment is there, like emotional investment, my life, like all going towards this thing. Like you're gonna try to take this thing away from me. I'm going to fucking stop you. I'm going to stop you. <laughs> like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, dude. It's not like, oh, I'll try to be there at 10 o'clock. It's like, I'm going to stop you. Just yeah, straight it's up. It's going down. Yeah. So there's that. I think that, um, yeah, man. She's just, I feel the thing where it's like, I think she's the most beautiful baby in the world. Like, I feel bad for all the other parents out there that had uglier <laughs> babies than mine. You know, like, you just don't get as lucky as me every day. But I also I also feel like that's obviously like just something that happens probably with everybody's baby. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Yeah. Maybe. I think so. But that's what I'm saying is I feel this glowing like um like almost favoritism or like this thing that's like, oh, that one's mine. Like it's like it's me, it's mine. It's like it feels bigger than it's like the lottery, but you you hit the lottery. But like it's not a lottery. I think everybody gets to feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Maybe not. Some people, obviously, there's complications at birth and stuff like that. We literally, we did hit a lottery in the sense where she's healthy. 
But um, but yeah, just there's a lot of like magical things going on that I didn't expect to experience that I feel like are these really cool nuances of having a kid, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I like how so. Um, like the thinking about her all the time is kind of crazy. Like all the time, all day long. Like if I, unless I'm doing something, you know what I'm saying? But if I'm just like having these like daydream moments, it's like, it's like I'm in love in that sense where it's like these thoughts are like coming out of me or coming to me. And it's like, I'm thinking about it like in the back of my mind all the time, which is cool. I like it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, that part is kind of crazy. Uh, feeling like this glow of like, she's perfect, but she's not. How could she be? But she is. She is right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, maybe that's the thing. Maybe she's fresh out of the spiritual world. So that's what I feel. You know what I'm saying? I feel this, like, perfect energy coming from Just her. Just on the other side. You know? It's like, you're not, you're not a human yet. You're not quite, you're not quite a human yet. You're still, like, more spirit than human or more something, you know? More baby than person, for sure. Oh, big time. Yeah. More fetus than person still, even on the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a little thing. No thoughts. Yeah, I can't. Or maybe thoughts. Who knows? But no... Who knows what's going on in the mind of a baby? Yeah. There's times, and it's probably different every they day. They hungry. They hungry for show. That's the, one thing for show. They hungry. Food drives thoughts. <laughs> There's somewhere she want, she wants milk and I'm giving her the, the binky. And then she like, sometimes she'll, she's just upset. So the binky just makes her happy. There's other times where she is hungry and the binky's not making her happy. She's like, this ain't it. So it takes her like maybe eight seconds before she's like, Milk's not coming in. <laughs> and she gets that same look I just gave you where she's like, Hello. It's like a it's like an angry question. Wait a minute. Like, what the fuck? And she's like, get this shit out of my mouth. And she just starts pushing it out of her mouth real slow. But I love low key, I love seeing that moment where she I watch her realize it and then she just is like, get it this away from me. I know. Because it's no. like that's a thought, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. some kind of She's there. Yeah, she's there. You know what I'm saying? She's there. Yeah. It's like, no, this ain't a nip. Where's the nip? Get this, shit out of my, get this plastic shit out of my face. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's like immediate. Boom. Yeah. As soon as you're born, you got that tongue. You got that tongue action. As soon, <laughs> no, as, soon as you're just, no, no, no. You're like 80% mouth. It's the funniest face <laughs> in the world. Just, no, no, no. Just, just, just reaching. Just try and get something going. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy that that's a, that's a thing, right? Because... Mm -hmm. Because the umbilical cord goes through their belly button. So yeah. I, just instinct. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're not trying to like fucking put it, they put it in their tummy. <laughs> they're, they know it goes in their mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's so weird. They put everything in their mouth, bro. Everything. It's not going in their mouth. I guess when they're in the womb, they, they go like this a lot with their hands when they're eating, even though it's like they're feeding through the umbilical cord, but they still like have this gesture of... Like, Touching their face? Yeah, mm -hmm. while they're eating, which I think is just wild life's a wild thing it's, it's like yeah you're, that's probably the most one of the most important parts about us i guess the sleeping and the eating it's like we need to we need to eat to live drink water eat and sleep we need yeah. those things to live we don't have those things we die yeah and air oxygen whatever breathing but i guess in the womb you're not breathing you're you're in like in fluids right it's like a fucking submarine yeah you're like in that bitch you're floating yeah i don't understand so then the air comes eventually and that's natural too yeah. She just breathes. <laughs> yeah. There was like this crazy moment when, cause it was just like, uh, man, imagine like you're, you're a football player, you're a linebacker. This is all of my metaphors or sports metaphors. I'm sorry, ladies. But you're like looking at the play and it's like, a, you, you got the play call, but then you hear coach yelling out an adjustment. And so you're like, wait, what's the adjustment? And then the ball hikes over there and you're like oh and you're like looking back and things are happening and you're like one step off of being fully in your natural rhythm of it mm -hmm. okay that was me when the baby popped out because <laughs> i was like lost in my thoughts and i'm thinking this and i'm looking at this and i'm like oh my god and then i just like <laughs> the ball snaps over here i hear someone be like no no it's in all blue 42 <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm like wait what just happened and then the baby was like they were like pulling her out but it was like I wish I would have been watching when they were like Hiking gathered. The ball. <laughs> yeah. I'm like watching them pull the, I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then they get her out and then I'm like, that's it? Oh my God, that's it. That's it. That Okay. And then I'm like trying to see her and then I look at the umbilical cord because Nick told us to make sure there's no fucking red chunky fluid in there. So don't worry. I'm about to tell these surgeons. <laughs> these fucking dialed up to, hey man, well, hey, why don't we hold on a second on cutting that cord? Just because that's what Nick told us to do. What did he say to do? He said that if the umbilical cord has like fluid in it still to like ask them, 
not to cut it yet until the fluid like goes the rest of the fluid to the baby. Oh, okay. Um, but I guess prior to that, it's like the rest of the food, or is like is like vital nutrients that need to go into it. I think it's nutrients. Probably something important. It's Nick said it was the rest of the. That's like the last sip of the <laughs> nutrients that come from that, and he's like, "Don't deprive them of that." And I guess if you cut it too, it like bleeds worse, and it's like hard to. <clears throat> deal with after that okay but anyways i remember looking at it and thinking all that stuff nick said and it was like completely clear like go so it was empty nice. and i was like oh, okay sweet but i think it was even before that in between when it popped when she popped out and when they cut the cord there was like a moment where like i'm like th- i i'm like wait isn't she supposed to like cry because there was like maybe two seconds and i'm like wait isn't that a thing and then she cried and she's like breathing you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i was just like that's crazy it's like not breathing, popped out. <gasps> We're hooping. Let's go. Just like that. Logged in. Start bro. in the game. <laughs> yeah. Start. <Nice. laughs> Log in. Bro, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, she's breathing naturally. Just eating. Yeah. Pooping. Super L- super lucky. Everything's been like healthy, healthy AF. <sighs> Blessed. Dude, yeah. It feels like my prayer got answered in that sense, where, like, that was the only attribute I prayed for and asked for her to be, like, you know, I wanted to, I thought about asking for her to be, you know, charismatic, beautiful, athletic, you know, but I just did not, and I just asked for her to be healthy, you know, smart would have been another one probably could have prayed for, <laughs> but I was just, like, it just felt selfish. I was, like, just wanted her to be healthy. Yeah, all those, all those fall below I'll the let health, you, you handle the rest, God. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking for healthy, please. Just give me the health. I got the rest. I got that. Yeah, that's it, bro. You said your uh, your algorithm was changing, or you've noticed like uh, some of your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some dude. of your life has changed. Well, YouTube YouTube definitely knows that we had a baby because YouTube just like in the last like week since I got home from the hospital. Have you looked up baby videos on YouTube? No. None? No, I don't like know. No diaper videos on nothing? Maybe I should have. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out how they would have gotten this information. Dude, I, I, I literally think I was on YouTube in the hospital a lot. Like in downtime, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So like maybe that was somehow how they could have garnered. That's how I think they got the information. You think was, so it's been recent since she's been born or like not leading up to it, but since? No, yeah. Since I got home from the hospital specifically. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's been like a ton. And it's not only that, but it's like they're political ads. What? Yeah, they're like, Ted Cruz definitely <laughs> would have killed your baby if it were up to him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> more or less. <laughs> they're like, this president believed in this, and this this guy helped this thing happen. And then listen to this mom talk about how, and this mom's like, you know, every time I see it, it's a reminder. There's two sippy cups, but there should have been three. And it's like this fucking mom talking about how they lost this baby for some reason. And... uh it's just like, it's crazy to me. I'm like, why the fuck? How the fuck do you think that you guys are going to like, you guys are like shooting videos to emotionally manipulate new parents into voting for who you want them to vote for? Because yeah, we're real emotionally charged in this time. We feel differently. I do feel differently. It's not like, it's not as cut and dry as like I woke up and I was like a different person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's just like, I do have a lot of new emotions I'm integrating into my person, you know? Yeah. And for you guys to try to manipulate that into getting me to be like, oh, let me represent myself differently by voting for this person, even though I don't normally vote, but I'm a dad now and I'm fucking, you know, I'm put my fucking, <laughs> well, my kid to vote, you know? I gotta set a good example here. Yeah, come on now. So America. You guys are fucks, bro. That's, that's crazy manipulation. That's marketing. <laughs> that's marketing, bro. <laughs> that's politics. That's crazy, bro. That's definitely marketing. Yeah, I don't know how they have that information to to. Yeah, what the fuck? How could they have known? How could how could you possibly have known unless you were already like looking up di- like baby related stuff before? No, I mean I, I Google stuff every now and then. Yeah, I was saying maybe are they are they're related Google and YouTube? Are they under one umbrella now? I don't I'm think so. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Let's ask. Is YouTube owned by Google? Unless I'm tripping, is YouTube its own thing still? Yes, YouTube is owned by Google. Okay, so that's how they fucking got Probably, you. Probably, yeah. Those sons of bitches. Yeah, right. Yeah, all your Google searches are leading into your YouTube algorithm too. Because I use the same email to log in to my yeah. Google and my homepage, you yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. Because the ads are crazy. Like when I see that, it was it's two soupy cups, but it should have been three. 
And it's this like sad mom talking about how don't vote for this person because my baby would be here if people like him weren't in power. I'm just like, you guys are fucking crazy. That is like high level manipulation, dude. Bro, that is blatant in your face. I want to tug at your heartstrings, bro. It's, yeah. And if I see that, I'm just so turned off to that. Me too. That's you know what, what I'm saying. saying. It it's pisses gross. me off almost. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. Even if I agree with you, it's like, shut the fuck up. All right? It's just unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you 100%. It's <laughs> the form. It's such poor form. Yeah. It's sick. Or it pisses not sick, me off. It, it's like, it, it disgusts me a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah, the, yeah. that's the, oh, that's gross. Exactly. Ugh, you're trying too hard or like it's, it's slimy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This is pure manipulation. Yeah. That's not cool. See, that's a snack. Manipulation is gross to me like that. Just like in any, if I feel like you're, someone's lying to me or they lie to them or like, uh, you know, they're, they're saying this because they want that response. And then as soon as they walk away, they're going to be like, they're going to change their voice a little bit. And they're going to be like, oh yeah, okay, tight. Yeah. Got what I wanted out of that situation. It's like, ah, it's just like, makes me sick, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but. Yeah. To put that on 10 is to be like a psychopath. Right. Right. <laughs> to where every interaction is just that you, you doing that day to day with everybody you meet, come across. It's like, that's a psychopath. Yeah. That's a crazy person. Yeah. Some of it's like, you know, you talk to your grandma, you change your voice a little bit, you know. Like, Hi, grandma. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk to Demi like, hey, what's up, dog? Hit my T's with Febreze. <laughs> what's that? I think it was Drake talking about, I don't even know, it was old Drake talking about having to hit his T's with Febreze because he was smoking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe Chance the Rapper talks about that too. No, I love that or bar. If I invite in my eyes and my grandma will hug me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The T's with Febreze line was good back in the day. <laughs> that was a bar back in the day. We were like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that's, yeah, yeah. So that's a, <sighs> Mm, I guess it comes into a line of manip- manipulation versus perception. I guess because you know that you're going to be perceived. So whenever you go see your grandma, you hit your teeth with a breeze and put in eye drops if you've been smoking. But like, right. so is that emotion, emotional manipulation as well? Are you, are you emotionally manipulating grandma? No, it's respect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I don't want her to – because it showing, showing up to her house a little, looking a little high – I know she's going to perceive that as disrespectful. So it's not like I'm not lying to her to... What if she's coming to our house for Thanksgiving? This is our house. Okay, Grandma. <laughs> that does change the rules because I, I do feel House like, rules, Grandma. House rules, dude. That's why I don't... A bounce is two cups, Grandma. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up. But even so, like with your... I think that like... So my mom would be disappointed if she saw me smoking at the dinner table. So I think out of like respect for my the spirit of my mom, I might not do it in front of my grandma. If that makes sense. Even just like... To translate it a, a layer away from grandma, even like just the spirit of what's respectful and what's not respectful, but also what's the energy that I'm acting in. That's another big, I think, barometer for what we're talking about. Like, if I'm doing it to be respectful, or am I doing it to lie to her? Oh, that's what you're saying. Do I think she's dumb, or do I respect her? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's manipulation means like I can pull wool over their eyes, I can trick them, I can take what I want, and they know they don't know the better. Yeah, yeah. Or it's like, yeah, it's like a tricking. The manipulation tint from that word, I guess it's the same thing as like just trying to have a nice presentation. You know what I'm saying? Like a restaurant. Sure. Sure. Like they're trying to make make it seem like fucking we're popping. We're popping. We're good. Right. But it's like you don't know what's going on for real. <laughs> right. You know what, what's, re- what's really happening. Right. So that's a different manipulation yeah, presentation. You're not trying to lie. I guess, I don't know. Yeah. What we were talking about is the, the energy of where it's coming from. <laughs> but what would be the opposite sure. if you were going to post all of the problems <laughs> that you're having? <laughs> Another link. <laughs> oh my God. No, no, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was, I was just kind of, kind of kicking that can around. Cause yeah, what you said, I think kind of sparked that in me or the idea that the energy where it's coming from and then also manipulation. Cause I guess it's with, with your presentation, your words, whatever your, whatever your expression, whatever your expression is, whatever you're expressing, your presentation of what you're doing, that's, if you're using it to influence, I guess, to lie to someone, I guess, yeah, in the grandma analogy, we're trying to, we're kind of not lying. We're just, we're just, maybe the right thing to do is to not smoke that day. So you're not lying. There you go. That would be maybe taking the proper step further, like the true Abel sacrifice. Mm. Maybe the Cain sacrifice is freeze and tease and Febreze. Tease and Febreze. But the Abel sacrifice would be like, hold on, I, I don't want to lie, but I do want to be respectful. I don't want to present like I'm smoking, so maybe I shouldn't smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
Because it's like one, kicking this can, I'm kicking this can. <laughs> one of the one of the dents I put in the can just a second ago in my mind was that it's not always because I I pretty much do live by when you when you say what's the energy behind it, like what's the intention behind it. Because like if you like you know if I call this if I call a uh, lady ma'am because I'm trying to be respectful, but then she thinks I'm calling her old. It's like well to some degree, it's like. I can't, you can't keep doing things on accident that offend people because you were trying to be respectful. At some point you're being like negligent of what would be appreciable. And then that would make it, even though though your intention was great, you're still like not, like I think you'd be generating less positive frequency by offending people, even if it's in the vein of good intention. Mm. It's like you need to have good intention and like have it go well too, you know? Mm. Yeah, the good intention. Uh, it, it, this is where it all comes from. Good intentions, right? But I'm saying as what, far as manipulation, manipulation entering that that territory, right, right. Mm-hmm. But I guess the the overarching thing was like, let's say that I'm not trying to manipulate grandma. I'm trying to be respectful, but just because I'm trying to be respectful doesn't mean that I'm not manipulating her. Hmm. We're getting deep. If grandma knows you smoke, it's all good, though. <laughs> yeah. I think manipulation, one problem with manipulation, too, is it's a little bit different. Like, if I'm getting someone to do something, I feel like that's more manipulation. Mm. And if I'm trying to get them to think something or feel something or do something, or maybe I want them to say something, maybe I want grandma to say something to mom later, so I need to not be high. So hopefully grandma says to mom, oh, yeah, didn't smell like weed over there. So they were sober. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think that's kind of manipulation like Ooh, okay yeah 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 okay now we're talking about shit and that's where the now intention we're talking part. with words yeah. bro words we're talking vocabulary with. and shit fucking sentences and shit <laughs> we we got the we got the the noun and the verb mm-hmm. we're getting there <laughs> yeah subject and predicate there the, it is the, the manipulation comes in when you're trying to yeah i guess because what's the intention that's yes. where i really want to yes if your intention was to trick someone or to get them to do something that's where i'm like that's a clear cut eh, you were in the wrong you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying yeah hitting your teeth with febreze and eye drops because you know that you told grandma that you weren't gonna be smoking anymore versus like she doesn't really care it doesn't really matter but like out of respect and just out of the to maintain the fucking homeostasis of the home during thanksgiving probably better that i don't smell like fucking bob marley <laughs> right you know what i'm saying right but like there's there's a scene in the Irishman where they're gonna go to hang out with the boss and the guy's like, Listen, think about the boss sucks. He doesn't like drinking. Not only does he not like drinking, he doesn't like anybody drinking around him. Ooh. You know what he doesn't like? Watermelon. And he puts a rum bottle in the watermelon and they soak the watermelon with the rum. And then they go to the boss's house and then at the after they're done eating and they're all hanging out, <laughs> the <laughs> they're eating the eating watermelon. Soaked up watermelon, yeah. getting fucked up. And the boss is like, boy, you sure do like those watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> you always bring them over. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, they're great. You want some? And he's like, oh, hell no. And he's like, but then it's funny because in that moment, like the new guy, he's like watching it and he's kind of nervous. He's like how I would be. He's not really eating the watermelon. Mm-hmm. He's kind of chilling. But the other guy, he's real gregarious and he's laughing and he's kind of drunk. And he's like, yeah, I know you don't want any. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then he's like, you know, I just assume in that moment he's going to get the shit beaten out of him when I'm watching the movie. Okay. I'm like, this is going to end horribly. <laughs> but in the movie, like... It's too much, right? Yeah, it's too that's, much. That's what I feel like. You like, trick the boss? Yeah. Or then you're going to like be bragging about it almost? Right. That's that, that's that's ballsy. Unnecessarily so. You already get, you already got away with it. You right. Know you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It would be it would be funny if it were just... Just score like, the touchdown. Just, just score little... the fucking touchdown. Right. <laughs> like, he's going to fumble right here. He's about to get stripped. <laughs> Why is he hitting the gritty on his way to the end zone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the new guy just kind of like laughs and then he's like, oh shit, this guy was right. About this guy not. He's like, all right, well, I'll meet the watermelon. But it was like, that's a good example of what I think that's that's a little bit too far manipulation. That's like, you you put some, you premeditated, you know? Mm. You had a plan. It's like, you can't really like, once you have a plan, it's like. And what are they there for? Like a dinner? Uh, a meeting, a dinner meeting, yeah. Yeah, so you can't go like two hours? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we gotta drink afterwards. Like, what the fuck? Right, exactly. That's all too much. Yeah. So I think that there's like, uh, man, there's just a there's just a truth. There's a truth somewhere involved, like where someone was trying to manipulate you or they were, you know. What's the, also, people don't have time to think about this shit this in-depthly. It's like just a regular person 
it's like a normal fucking, you know, oh, grandma's coming over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I think if that person said, oh, oh, let's go ahead and hide the weed stuff. She's not going to want to see that. Like, that's not a bad person. That's not, that's good intention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God, it does get in the weeds, though. It gets weedy. It gets, weedy it gets weedies. <laughs> Box of weedies. Why do you got to hide shit from your parents? That's not good. You hide shit from your kids, too. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> the webs we weave. <laughs> you got to hide downwards. I don't think you should hide upwards much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Demi ain't hiding shit. She shouldn't hide shit. Yeah, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? You need to feel open enough to tell me anything. I saw a fucking, I saw a threads, because I had finally downloaded threads. I don't like that Instagram got me for another app. I don't even use it. Well, just sometimes when I'm scrolling past the fucking... The I sne- have one, but I never use it. The sneak preview <laughs> threads are yeah. so enticing. They got some good hooks on them, bitches. They are like great at it, dude. Like The click-through they get out of me is like... It surprises me <laughs> how often they get the click-through. <laughs> it's like bringing you to a different app. You're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't download it for a long time because I was like... You know, fuck that. <laughs> Get me to click through to your own app. You're making me <laughs> you make me no one wants to feel like they got got. Nobody wants to feel like they got, they got got. Okay. No, and they just want to turn me into a double user. So mm-hmm. like Instagram has a bunch of numbers and money because I give them numbers and money. They just want to double that by making another app. It's like, let's just times two our product. Yeah. On I principle. Guess, I guess more more Twitter. Twitter stylistically, more conversation, kind of forum based. I guess people are you it is Twitter in the sense you can still post videos and still post pictures. It's just Instagram, Twitter. It's just Instagram, Twitter. It's just trying to take Twitter's audience. Yes. Or some of them, at least. Any that they can. Any that they can. Right. Like, come on. Come Especially on because here. Elon's such a debatable character. If we could cancel Elon Musk and just give him Twitter on Instagram, she. Facebook people would be happy about that. Yeah, who knows? Rav on the back, though. Threads. Threads, they got you. They got me. Bitches. I scroll down. Past the click through thread, and I get to a point that says, "It's like just a girl posting," and she says, "Oh no, my mom found out about my OnlyFans," and I was just like, "Yo, yo, sin." That's a horrifying. <laughs> that's a horrifying. Just even just page to read out of anybody's book. Oh God. Oh, God above, help us. Christ, help all of us. Christ, help us all. Come back. <laughs> Please. Come on back now. We ready. Please, God. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah, that's horrible. That's horrific. Horrific shit. Yeah. So, you know, that she was definitely lying about that, right, to her parents. Um, But I don't think she should have been, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Oh man, where's that even? I guess you you want the you need the money or it felt like the tweet was also this like oh I'm so cute and trendy haha <laughs> my parents found out about my OnlyFans oh no and I was just like oh, wow. oh. just culturally you're just like shucks oh it happened to me it happened it could happen to you like get the fuck out of here it's just promo for her OnlyFans <laughs> go work at the fucking library yeah it could have been. <laughs> It could have been. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, wait, no. The, the thing that I'm alluding to is that I don't, I don't want it to be a, this cultural thing. People are like, in college, everyone had OnlyFans for a little bit in college. It's like going to become the new lesbian phase. Oh, no. OnlyFans phase. That's what I'm saying. Fuck. Dude, yeah, that's fucking rough, dog. What a crazy world we live in. We live in Satan's domain. How was that right? It's like, how is like that and porn like legal? You know what I'm saying? It's like legal. We just like do that. Like alcohol, it's like it's just legal. It's like, who the fuck is determining these legalities? You can tell me a little bit of something that grows out of the ground. Is he legal? Someone's gonna open my mind, open my glands. <laughs> fuck you, dog. Yeah, <laughs> people, fuck? people serving like thirty year sentences for selling weed, pushing porn. They're fucking. I can't take a little. Take a little bit of some one ups. It's crazy. That's crazy talk. It's crazy. Yeah, they say they say that if you want to get people to vote, you got to come after weed and porn. Like what that. do you mean? Get them to vote? <laughs> oh, like as far as they, like have, have policies or issues regarding those subjects? Because like most most politics don't actually interact with your life. Like we were talking about. Yeah, but <laughs> most of them you never see, you know? Yep. But if you come after weed or you come after porn, people will see that and then they'll be pissed off. Hey. Hey, what the fuck? Hey, pal. <laughs> just rolling doobie. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us <some> porn. <laughs> you come over here and cock block me? <laughs> Arrest me? The fuck, Uncle Sam? You best believe I'm going to be voting this November. <laughs> See me in a booth. <laughs> but yeah, that's like a, a saying, you know, mm-hmm. for older people. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. To, to like that, 
uh, in Satan's domain. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. Because it's also fuck? like, who's making those decisions now? Is it's it's not the slow process of democracy making it difficult to get weed legal and porn illegal. No, it's fucking people are like these are the settings. This is perfect. We keep these the, are the settings. We keep the dangerous alcohol legal, and we keep the safer high illegal. That way, we push people towards being drunk all the time. Way better for what we want here. Keep the the stuff that would actually get you like healthier, maybe mentally clarity. Let you work through some of your trauma. Your glands. Your, your <laughs> glands. <laughs> right? Keep that shit illegal. Let's fucking propaganda. Let's do as much as we can to make it seem like people die from that. And then, um, yeah, let's see. Porn. Well, we need the we need the sex trade. You know? We need to be able to ship little kids across the world. And so we kind of need the porn industry to open up avenues and doors for those things to to be allowed to happen so we can facilitate it. So definitely keep that legal all the way. Mm-hmm. It, it it's crazy. It's I, crazy. I think that that's the conspiracy. That that's the greatest conspiracy is that the Illuminati is real, and that they pretty much dictate what the fuck that they that they're the people that are in charge of Russia invading Ukraine, and then the same people that are in charge of Israel getting attacked are these like string pullers that are plotting global charting, and it's billionaires. People, I mean, shit, dude, I trillionaires have a hard time keeping a couple thousand dollars in my bank account. These people have trillions. Tr- Billions of dollars, dude. With a T. With it, so much money. It's like, I don't even want to give my kids all this money. It's too much money. It's too much. It's too much money. What, what do you do with too much money? It's so much power. You mean someone else has got too much money? And you guys talk about what you do with too much money? It's fucking squid game shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like those guys in the towards the end when they're like the people who are watching the events go on and who are betting on the players or whatever. Yes. Like those guys. Yes. That shit. Whoever whoever dabbles into that or fits that characteristic or that type of trope of character of person, they're, they're fucking out there, bruh. They're fucking out there. Yes. They're out there. I don't know why this remind, that reminded me of a movie. Have you seen uh, The Wave? I think it's, I think I've told you about it before. No, I don't think I've seen it. Maybe you told me about it. I want to say it's on Hulu. I'm not sure where it's if it's still on Hulu, but I remember watching it a couple years ago. Just on a random whim. It has Donald Faison in it. Right. And Justin Long. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. You told me to watch it. You were like, hit me. Hit me. It's fucking crazy, dog. It's just, I'm pre- yeah, it's called The Wave. And that was like the one of our terminologies that we had to use with ourselves, like developing our own kind of understanding of what's happening here, yeah. trying to figure out what the fuck's going on in life. Yeah. It's like, I, think I, I get wavy or like the, I catch the wave and like a synchronicity start happening and whatever, you know, and that was kind of our terminology. So then, see, I seen The Wave on this movie. I was like, I'm going to watch that shit. Yeah. And then... Out of nowhere, didn't even like plan on watching it. It was, I think we watched it like in the morning. Dude, like, that happens. Movies present themselves to you. No, out of nowhere, no right. intention of watching it. Not, not, not even heard of it. Never even fucking heard of this movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, Justin Long, Donald Faison, love those guys. Boop. There's this feeling of like, this is something I'd watch. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I clicked this. You know, <laughs> like that's that's that feeling you get. Like I read the read ahead in the script. It's like Justin clicks. It's like, I was like, okay, like, yeah. Go. I did the same thing. Because so I'm watching this. Certain actors, certain tropes, certain themes. Oh, this is a fucking mob movie with blah 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 blah. Bang! Like, there's like a yep. I'm watching that. You know. Yeah. The the commitment to it. Yeah, like, but this gets my attention and energy and focus. <laughs> right. And it's so crazy how that can happen. Like. And, he, and it seems like these movies that are trying to talk to you uh-huh. will do that to you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've had that happen. Right. Yeah. It's like, I think we talked about that before where you're watching Training Day or something. Yeah. On, on like a crazy time, like just in the in the synchronicities of time, the days leading up to it and the days following, which is like, what a crazy. And he watches this movie right there. You know? <laughs> no intention of doing it. But it was the same fucking thing with this one. And it's super, super good. But I just remember there's a, a part of it because we were talking about before that movie. We were talking about the, the people who are like in Squid Games, like the people who are running the show and fucking doing the shit, have all the money that in the world who are bo- like so bored to the point to where the only entertainment they can get is by watching these people like die more or less or like, you know what I'm saying, do whatever the fuck they got to do and they're cruel, whatever the fuck. So those people. But I think that place, so like where the, how they get to that place, it comes from a place that's kind of alluded to in the, the Wave movie. At one point, there's the Justin Long character, and I, I, for, I forget the the exact sequence of how it all happens, but he gets he takes some sort of drug or he gets some sort of crazy psychedelic experience through some sort of ingestion of some sort of drugs. I forget what happens exactly. I think I don't, I don't, I, either way, I don't want to spend too much time on it. But he gets he's in this altered state and he's like tripping the fuck out. He has to like go back to work, and his work his job is. He's not advertising. He's more like a parent, like in like the legality, like a legal team. He like he works for like a legal team for this large corporation, 
and they are currently trying to – part of his job is to like try to mitigate loss and try to not pay out as many losses as they can, obviously, try to save as much money as they can legally. And then they're working on one particular case in the movie where he's able to discredit it or like there's a, a, a lawsuit filed against them. But then he's able to get some insider information throughout the movie that is able to – like cancel out his his or like the the claim like the lawsuit claim so he's able to be like oh no we, we could just fucking instead of losing because I guess they were in the wrong for some reason whatever they did some sort of procedure or whatever their company does they were in the wrong so then this guy right, rightfully sued them and probably was gonna win but then Justin Long comes across his information and he's like okay no nah, he can't sue us because of this this and this like we're gonna drop the case we're gonna save twenty million dollars or whatever the fuck and then there's a point in the movie like while he's disclosing this information to his legal team. A clock on the wall falls down and like just as it hits the ground, like he gets transported mentally into like a, he's still in the room in like the boardroom like this with like a big, large, large table, four or five people kind of sitting around talking about it. And then the clock hits and then he gets like teleported mentally to this fucking, he's still in the room, but everything is like psychedelic, like when you're fucking tripping and everything is like moving and everything's like alive and the colors are crazy. But then the people that he's sitting around the table with, like they're just normal people. But then when the clock hits, they're like it's like they're the spiritual comes out or like the abstract, whatever's going on behind the scenes of this physical world. It's like they're they're whatever they're aligning with. It's like fucking malicious, and it's like a crazy like money grubbing, like sex laundering, or like very sexualized kind of like evil sort of energy that there's like these these actors are now displaying in this crazy abstract world that he's living in or seeing through this crazy drug experience. But like I think that place is like a real thing. I think that that movie was like whoever wrote that movie and wrote that scene has like dabbled into the other realm and has seen and felt like the fucking because I've seen and felt it in like the when we take the multi multi mega vitamins yeah you feel that like we're in Satan's playground a little bit yeah where it's like oh this place is crazy this is a scary place yeah this is a really scary place yeah I definitely feel that it's a scary movie it's a scary movie yeah people out here <laughs> trying to yeah people are actively not trying to be good people. For their own benefit, whether it be financial or fucking status or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that movie, the way like that's the only it. mode you could gain status through. <laughs> it's crazy to me. Bro, it's lazy. It's in. It's insane. It's insane. But yeah, I highly recommend that movie, especially that part. That part which is like fucked me up. I was like, whoa. I think whoever writes these movies, you know, the screenplays, all the people who are they're, they're all this. Everyone's just trying to get their message across, and then sometimes they're able to get their message across, portray it through actors and dramatization, and then like I'm able to see that message, and I'm just like, whoa, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know where you got that from. I think I know what you're thinking, like where your beliefs are coming from. So I think whoever made that movie is like in the same boat of thinking that we are, where they're like, whoever's in this like P Diddy shit, it's like this this thing is coming out. This is like we're getting ruff feathers ruffled in the right direction of like truth and like the opening our eyes to the real levels and layers of the fucking evil that's like we're dealing with that is out there people are fucking terrible people are yeah like sex trafficking and all that shit all the epstein and yeah, the diddy shit i don't think it's gonna come because i mean we epstein island we had the fucking we had him in jail and we had the fucking the flight log with like actors in it like it wasn't just like a we had three people it was like they had like we had like Tom Hanks and we had fucking like names and shit. They have like dozens, right? Yeah, I think it's like thirty. And uh, whatever happened with that? Whatever happened? With <laughs> whatever that, happened with that, bro? Fucking Gangnam Style came out. Are we still doing anything with that? What happened with that? I couldn't tell you. I haven't Some, heard anything. Maybe nothing. Months, happened. dude. Like it might have been years. I can't even remember when that happened. But that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? Was this a Henry? Henry Epstein? Is that his name? Harry? Uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Epstein. Right. And some tripping. Okay. So I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up. What's the most recent? Because when did that even happen? That happened eight years ago? Longer? I was going to say three years ago, but I could be mistaken. No, maybe make it share shorter? Uh, I I really don't know. I was going to guess three, but eight would make sense too. But yeah, he, he like, quote unquote, hung himself in jail. But it's like, people don't really think he hung himself. Oh, they, they think he was killed? Yeah. Because he had too much. Okay, so that was that, that's where we're at with it? Yeah. <laughs> he's dead? Yeah, he's dead. But they still should have released the flight log. And nothing came out after that, though? With the, I guess because he wasn't able to testify? It or? was leaked that like Bill Gates was on the flight log, that um, Tom Hanks was on the flight you log. You said Bill Gates? Mm-hmm. 
It was like Shit. billionaires. I think maybe some of the names did come out. What's going on here, man? But yeah. He was arrested five years ago. 2019. But the push for accountability continues. And that was as of July. So I guess they're, they're still pushing this shit. But I guess he's dead. I remember hearing that. Yeah. So damn, he's been, he got arrested five years ago and we still ain't done really shit about any of the associated people with his ring or whatever the fuck. There was never like a... The, the the scandal broke open or these people got brought to justice because of the Epstein scandal or like, here's the people re- responsible. Like, nothing like that. It was just like one person, him. And then he died. And then that was it. What the fuck? But yeah, I think I think it's those people. The sex industry, the sex, you know, what do you call it? The sex worker industry or the human trafficking industry. I think those ones are fucking... They do not want that shit coming to light, bro. They need that to be a rumor. But it, it, it got a little traction over social media in the last, like, two years, I think. What do you mean to be a rumor? Like, that human trafficking is as large of a industry as it is. Hmm. That there's people abducting and, like, caging and trafficking people and kids to be, like, workers and migrant workers and sex slaves. Migrant workers isn't right, but I mean, like, doing, like, um, like unpaid labor, lo- like, you know. Like for no, like no money, yeah. Um, stuff like that. I think that shit happens. I think that shit happens. I think it's a m- million, maybe a billion dollar industry, probably. But oh yeah, I'm pretty sure Pastor Red talks about that. Or he talked about that last year, I think. Right? Maybe that's where I my. I'm not sure why I'm so <clears throat> confident that that's true. Maybe that's why. But yeah, that shit's crazy, bro. But it's like not, you know, this is this this video is not gonna this clip right here of this talking about this subject isn't gonna get a ton of views. I don't think like the algorithm's gonna play it up a whole lot. I think that like. The, the people that are pulling the strings want to keep it like underneath the surface level of society so that people don't go to school as little kids thinking, oh, yeah, like 100 people get abducted a day. It's like you're just like, yeah, you know, people get kidnapped on like criminal minds. They usually find them, you know, but like that shit's scary, bro. That's fucking scary, bro. Yeah, it's just really going on. Yeah. Really, really going on. It's fucked up. Yeah. Shit's really fucked up. There's like a fucking black web stuff. Black, dark, dark internet. Dark sites. web or whatever. Yeah, get on the dark web. Of course you don't. It's like this whole thing you got to do. Yeah, how do you even get there, bro? I mean, I don't want to give instructions out to people, <laughs> but like, I was watching this TV show, whatever the fuck it was called, Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot, and then it kind of like talks about it enough that I like asked a couple questions to my dad, who's super tech savvy, and you basically like he knows. Yeah, I was. Uh, there's one person to pop you, dad. If I had to ask, yeah, he definitely <laughs> had to phone a friend. Gun to your head, he could get you there. Right. Yeah. But it's like, you got to like, the thing about it that makes it difficult is like, you have to have a specific operating system. It's called like Onion or something like that, where like, it allows you to connect to dark web IP addresses. And then those IP addresses are like different than normal IP addresses, but they're also like completely custom. So you'd have to like, get the IP address from the someone, someone that knows. And like, usually it's like a, a username type of thing. So they're going to like vet you to some degree. If you're like coming to their site, they're going to be like, wait, who do you know? Or like, blah, 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 X, Y, Z, like to to feel like they can trust you, I guess. And then like, there's like, once you're in and you know the address of the website, then you like have this computer and you like switch off of windows and then you switch onto the onion. It's just like a black screen. And then you go to the IP address for the website and then it pulls up like a custom made basically website that's like I've, I on... You know, on Mr. Robot, it showed, like, you know, you can buy, like, fake money, you can buy drugs, you can buy prostitutes. It, it it was saying you could, like, pay for, like, little kid prostitutes, basically. And then it was also saying, like, uh, you could do murder for hire and stuff like that. And I, I've also seen other viral clips of, like, real-life people talking about that kind of stuff being on the... Getting into it? Yeah, on the dark web. Like, people that just <laughs> know how to do it, and then they're being interviewed about it later, you know? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Oh, God, dude. That reminds me of a, a podcast. I think I may have mentioned it before, but it's called Sword and Scale, I want to say. Listen to it fucking long, 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 long time ago, yeah. back in college. And it was just talking about how the whole premise of the show is kind of like shedding light on some crazy fucked up shit that people are doing, more or less. Like the real, or uh, the worst monsters are real, I think is kind of like part of their intro type shit. But yeah, I just remember them talking about the dark web 
on, on one particular episode and just like there was people that maybe he was interviewing people or maybe he just had a the episode was about one particular thing but then he had a segment in that episode talking about how he got some of this information i guess maybe he knows people or got this somehow but people who like part of their job is to search the dark web i think the uh like the federal government or whatever the fbi and motherfuckers right. have to have have to have somebody on that to like see where the where the fucked up well, shit's happening bonnie and clyde shit right because uh. if they can just figure out how to be smarter than the law then they get away with crime forever so mm-hmm. the law like has to do something about that. Yeah, constant cat and mouse. They're always chasing them. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that that may have been where I got this information. But I think he he had said that there might be some branch of the government or some branch of law enforcement that has a department that does that specifically. People search the dark web for the fucked up shit to see what's happening. How can we stop this? Where's it happening? Whatever. Hopefully, right? I would, right. I would assume someone's out there trying to stop this bullshit. I think that it's, I think it's in such a way that you can't like, there's not like a registry of every website that exists out there. Mm-mm. There's not like a list you can go through. Mm-mm. So it's not like they're just like, oh yeah, there's like six really big dark websites. You know, they there probably are people that are like, there's three really big ones that we know about that we can't like crack down on yet. And those are the three that we know about, but there's probably more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it would, it would be a difficult job is what I'm trying to say. It's not so cut and dry. Yeah. Because some people I think, it, when I hear you say that, I was like, yeah, just go in there and stop them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's like they're good at, and plus they know too. Like once you start playing that game, you're fucking, you're gonna go to jail forever, dude. Like you're never gonna get out. You're all the way in, so you're really not trying to get caught at that point. Mm-mm, it's life and death. Like you're paying fucking millionaires, billionaires in China to help you figure out how to like run your tech and stuff like that. Mm. For instance, like in this Mr. Robot, the main character ends up being approached by someone who knows that, that he's so technologically savvy. And that person is actually Daryl from the office. And he basically gets like him to help him fix his website, but he needs him to like not look at it basically. <laughs> and then at some point he's like having this internal conversation where he's like, knows that it's some fucked up shit that he's doing. And he's like, hold on. Not the Daryl character or like, well, cause the main character, the protagonist, the the white dude, uh, he, Daryl's the bad guy. Oh, he's the one, guy, he's guy. the one that, he's the one that has a website that needs the help. Yeah. And then it, he also had this whole side story going on where like his wife had died and you know, or was dying. I think it was that his wife was dying. I can't remember. But anyways, you know, he had to do it at some point for these reasons and now he can't stop doing it. And then he see, he like logs into it and looks at it and it's like all this shit. And he's like, Oh my God, like fuck this dude. Like I'm not doing this. And then he's like going to report him basically to the FBI. Cause that's what he did for like in his free time. And Mr. Robot, he just found these dark web places and reported them to the FBI because he was technologically savvy enough to actually find them. Yeah. Isn't like the, isn't that like the very first, part of like the pilot yeah he's like fucking some guy over yeah Mm -hmm. that's basically what he would do is find people that were like lying or hurting people or doing really fucked up shit and then like go through their computer and find all the proof that they thought was hidden and then like show it to people so then you know this is this guy's fucking ethos so he's like fuck it i'll just i don't care like and they're like beating him they're torturing him they're jesse pinkman and this guy making him work fix all their shit whatever and then at the end after he reports him he's like i don't care you can fucking kill me dude like we're going down. I already, they're on their way. They're going to be here in 30 seconds. Like you're fucked. And then Daryl's just like, ah, now you're good, man. Don't worry about it. This is, this shit's been fucked up for a long time. It's like, miss my wife. I'm happy it's over. But like, it was weird. Cause it's like this guy who was like running and operating the site, like beating the shit out of our protagonist and forcing him to do all this shit. Like when it came down to, it, it was just like, yeah, the shit was fucked up, man. Yeah. I don't even want to be doing that. You know, deep down, you fucking know, man. What is, what is that thing? What is that thing that will get you to do all the shit and then just be like, later be like, yeah, yeah, yeah that shit was fucked up. It's crazy, bro. Being animated by what you think you need to be doing, justifying it, I guess. Once you're into deep. And then you're into fucking deep. That's a real problem. Yeah, you make it a necessity and then you... It's a necessity. I have to keep doing this. I have to keep doing this. This is the only only option. It's getting deeper and deeper. That's fucked up. It's fucked up, Daryl. Fucked up, bro. <laughs> fucked up. He was a good character to play that guy, though, because I think they wanted you to not hate him or to feel this, like, he's a person part of him. 
Like they would play chess together and stuff, and you kind of wanted to like the guy, but you couldn't because he's fucking faci- facilitating human trafficking. It's crazy. Oh man! So yeah, that story that, that shit's out there, bro. It's just out there, man. It's shit's out there. Do you think anything anything is gonna come about? Like I could, the same way that we were kind of talking about how it's been five plus years for this Epstein stuff, and I don't think there's been a whole lot of ground covered or like a whole lot of retribution or a whole lot of anything going on with any of the names on the list, right? Right. Not to my knowledge. I, I'm, then again, I'm very uninformed, so that's not saying a lot. True, but uh, I'm sure I would have seen it or heard about it if some big shit that happened. You know, whatever, because the big names are on that list. But like, do you think anything I guess was going to come out of this this Diddy thing, like a similar trickle down effect, where it's like this one? So Epstein was the main guy; he got fucking. <laughs> but now Diddy's this main guy in the spotlight of all this bullshit, terrible accusations. Do you think anything's going to come off of that, or any other, any other lists or names or whatever? Because I'm. I'm I think I've heard that's like a conversation piece going around. Absolutely not. You think? I, I think Dave's just gonna get killed. You think so? Yeah, probably. Right. That's what I think. <laughs> he don't get Epstein. It's too big of a scandal, he bro. Don't get Epstein. What are you gonna tell us? Beyonce is behind sex trafficking. You gonna come on and tell us that? Really? You think America's gonna handle that well? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, dude. Come what on, was Michael Jackson man. doing with those kids, bro? I'm just like, bro. Lord knows. Bro, I'm saying, bro. It's like been. It's it's not that it's been right there, but it's just like, you can't keep having Michael Jackson have kids at his house and Pizza Gate and Epstein and Diddy, and you just can't keep. I mean, it's just like, at one point, are you gonna be like, okay, I know you're cheating on me to your partner. Like, do you need do you need to see her fuck the guy right in front of you? Like, do you need to come home and like have it be right in your face? Uh-huh. Or like, at some point, you're like, okay, like I know what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That's how I feel with like. I, I don't think they're going to come out and say it because I, I think there's a bunch of guys, a bunch of millionaires that are like in suits that are saying like, what are they going to do about it? What are they going to do about it? Give them, we'll make weed legal. I don't care. Fuck it. We'll make weed legal for 15 <laughs> years and then we'll make it illegal. We'll have some people die. We'll say it's terrible for you. We'll have some studies come out and then fucking we'll be on to some other shit because people fucking forget, bro. People fucking forget. Do you know who Jimmy Hoffa is? No, people fucking forget. Sounds really familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I, I should have given you the opportunity to answer, but that one trips me out because I'm just like, I had no clue who Jimmy Hoffa was, other than Big Sean says, you disappear in the D like you Jimmy Hoffa. But no, Jimmy Hoffa was like this person that, you know, the Teamsters, do, do you know, like, so the Teamsters were like, um, like a, a headquarters for unionizing industries. So like, if you wanted to have a union for like, uh, they, were, they were mostly like truck, I think it was specifically trucking unions. So it was like, if you were in the state of New Jersey, specifically in this one city in New Jersey, and you were a trucker, then like you could be a part of that township if that town had a township. And then that would be like, you know, township 337 was the one in Newark, New Jersey. So like if you were living in Newark, New Jersey and a truck driver, you would sign up and you'd be a part of that club. And it was basically like a social club and they handled like your money and your insurance and your it was like taking the idea of being like a 1099 trucker where they just like hire you individually Mm. and then giving yourself like a corporation that you work for by signing up but they also gave like um like insurance and retirement plans and pensions so like you would give you know like percentage of your check and then they would match the percentage into your 401k or whatever it was and so, be, but because they were doing that and because they had so many people signed up, they had like a, like a million dollar, multi-million dollar pension fund. But then because they weren't controlled by a government agency, they were just like their own, this was like Jimmy Hoffa's business kind of, he like could give out loans on the pension with no, there was no check, there was no balance. So anybody that he wanted to, like if somebody wanted to build a hotel and they needed $2 million and he had $8 million in the fund, he could give them the $2 million at like 20% interest and just make money like that. And that's really what he was doing. Hmm. But he was selling it as like he's a representative for the truckers and that he's like the working man's people. If you got your groceries from a store, they came from a truck. If you got milk at your house today, that milk came from a truck. That came from a truck. It's like... <laughs> Is it quotes? Yeah. I mean, like, they're quotes from the movie. Okay. So, like, I don't know if they're true. There's a movie about it? Yeah. Or uh, The Irishman. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he uh, Jimmy Hoffa's like a main character, and it kind of goes into like a historical. Oh shit! Okay, cool. Understanding of who he was and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I didn't know who the fuck he was. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, this isn't like I'm not like yeah, but you guys don't know. I'm like we don't know. You know what I'm saying? We don't fucking know that shit. <laughs> we don't know shit, y'all. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. So like yeah, so this guy, eight million dollar or so fund, but also he's like funding the mobsters who were building Las Vegas at the time. So a lot of the casinos got loans from Jimmy Hoffa with the Teamsters to build like Caesar's Palace. Huh. And so like one problem is, is that the government is like, yo, you got like the mobsters who we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, organized crime. Having their own bank basically. Yeah. From the Teamsters. And this shit is like we can't regulate it. So this shit is like fucked. But they were just having a field day because they couldn't, they kept indicted, they indicted Jimmy Hoffa like 12 times and took him to court every time, but they couldn't fucking pin him down because it like loaning money wasn't illegal. There was no regulation on it. So he kept trying to get him for other shit, but they couldn't really get him on the other shit. But he was hanging out with mobsters and I mean, they had, I mean, the whole movie's The Irishman. He's like a hitman. That's his job. So he just like keeps getting passed around to the mob and to these different people for these different, like when they need a hitman around. And so... Like, yeah, they're doing illegal shit. You know what I'm saying? They they, mm-hmm. they should be brought down. Especially the mob. They're making all their money from illegal activities, you know? Yeah. But regardless, that's what ended up happening probably because it's like a fiction movie is that the Jimmy Hoffa got taken. He ended up getting sent to prison eventually. And then while he was in prison, they elected someone else to be the president of the Teamsters. So someone else was now in charge of the fund. Mm-hmm. And then when... <clears throat> He, Jimmy Hoffa, came back. The new guy that was in charge gave much better loans to the mobsters and many more loans to the mobsters. Jimmy was like a little more purse on the strings, strings Mm. on the purse tight. And then the mob was like, yo, Jimmy, we ain't like down for that shit, bro. And we don't really want to let you be the president again because we don't like how you were giving loans. But then Jimmy Hoffa still had connections with the other people working for the Teamsters, like the administrative board, the board of directors. And so he was getting them to block some of the loans because he was kind of like planning like, okay, when I come back in office, you can't, I don't want that loan out. I don't want, don't do that shit. I'll be back in like six months. I'm running again, all this shit. But, and Jimmy Hoffa might've won the presidency again, but he needed to go ask people for support. And the people that he needed to ask for support were people that he'd gotten into verbal arguments with. And he just couldn't do it. He, mm. he couldn't say he was sorry. He kept being like, no, fuck you, prick. And like just <laughs> blowing up with them at the table, you know? Oh, no. It's that one actor who's always like, and I never fucking saw. <laughs> it's that he's in all the mob movies. Um, like Joe Pesci? Joe, it's, it's Joe Pesci. Is that his name? He's like, <laughs> who's the coach on uh, the football movie? The coach Any on given football Sunday? Movie. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, man. He's in all the mob movies, anyways. He's a great, he's a great screamer. <laughs> great scream, great scream. Got a great scream on him. Yeah, he's screaming his ass off at uh, all these people that he can't. All he has to do is say, "I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that shit to you." Would you please support me? And they would have like given him his support. He would have got the presidency back. But then, so he can't. He keeps blocking the loans for the mobsters, and he keeps getting into verbal disrespectful disagreements <laughs> with everyone that he needs support from. And then the mob ends up the they say the Jewish mob because it was like the Italian mob and the Jewish mob were both working with the Teamsters. They're all mingling, integrated, especially with Cuba and stuff because they were making a ton of money, and uh, they were making a ton of money in Havana because they were building casinos in Havana. Mm. And then it turns out that like JFK's family, the Kennedys, they were really associated with like the Jew mob and the Italian mob, and because they made all their money bootlegging liquor when prohibition was going on. But then they were so powerful in America that they were able to get the the main bootlegger was the dad, but JFK was the son. So they were able to get the son elected through the dad's connections. But then that's why they went after Castro in Cuba was because they wanted to open Cuba back up and open Havana back up to American business. But Castro had blocked off Havana from all these casinos getting built. So they were like, we'll get JFK elected, but then... The Italians were like, we'll get JFK elected, but then we need JFK to kill Castro. And then that kind of balances all of that out for us. And then when the Bay of Pigs got squashed, like they fucked it up. They didn't like they invaded with like 2000 people and then they didn't have any air support and they all died and Castro still lived. Then that was JFK like tried. And then after that, JFK's dad died. 
And that was the person that was like kind of controlling JFK. So because he no longer had his dad's influence telling him like, hey, you need to get rid of Castro. Mm -hmm. You need to remember who the fuck you owe because like it's not good. Then the Italians couldn't get JFK to play ball without the dad in the picture anymore. Bang. That's how JFK dies. Bang. And then the... the In the movie talks about that? Um, Or just like alluding to it? No, it talks about it. Shit. Yeah. And then, uh, because like they show it, then the JFK dies and they're like... Knew that, knew that motherfucker why didn't why like they, they're all like that was we knew that was gonna happen or like we thought that that might because it's always like hey if you don't fucking we're gonna fucking and then if they don't do the thing and then he dies they're like oh my god we knew it you know what i'm saying we told him same thing with jimmy hoffa though he keeps blocking the loans the italians don't like it because they want the better loans for the casinos and then he loses all his support within the teamster community so he doesn't have anybody watching his back anymore and then um, that's when the, the in that movie it's someone in the Jewish mob says to puts the green light on him and it's the main character the protagonist the Irishman in the movie and then it's actually Jimmy Hoffa's like one of his best friends but he's in too deep he can't say no like he literally tries and they're like he's, he's gotta go like you're watching him fuck up every opportunity all he has to do is say I'm sorry and he can't say I'm sorry what do you want us to do mm. you gotta kill this guy so that's how they say how Jimmy Hoffa disappeared in that movie wow okay all of that shit is like you got to go watch the Irishman and really be fucking paying attention, bro, to catch that shit. <laughs> it's like a four hour movie. Yeah, it's way too long. Th- three and a half, seriously. <laughs> that shit is long, bro. My That's a, God. That was like a fucking turning point in our history. It was like World War II, the Cold War with Cuba, JFK getting assassinated, and then it was like Bill Clinton, you know? So, like, it's just crazy because it's like, that's who, that's who was running America. Hmm. I don't think much has changed. The mobs. Yeah. The mob. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, there's a point where we needed money for a war. I can't remember what war it was. And we borrowed it from, I think it might have been World War II. No, it couldn't have been. I don't know. But I remember there was a point where the American government had to borrow money from the mob because they had more money than we did. We needed more money. That shit's like integrated into our culture. It is there. You don't think it's there, but it's there. Yeah, right. I think that's a line at uh, Ozarks. I'm pretty sure is what the what the kid says. He's like, in the whenever the market crashed in 2008, the housing market crashed. It's like what the I think he said Jonah, the the kid of the main uh, money launderer. If you've never seen it, it's fucking fantastic. You gotta watch that show. It's amazing. But yeah, I think he says to his teacher one time. I, f- I forget why he even talks to his teacher in this way or what what brings it about but i think the line was just saying something that like whenever the housing market crashed in 2008 that like mob money was like what kept the fucking economy like okay or, like not crashing completely 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 right there it is you know what i'm saying yes mm-hmm. that's that i think that's what i'm referencing right now you know, land on some money it's cr- they got they got money <laughs> Dude, so golly, some, 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 who knows what's gonna come from this Diddy shit? Yeah, I don't know. These are also the things I think about having a kid too. Because I'm just like, how do you even tell them that shit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do I even? Do you even want to? I don't know. Not really. I don't think I want to tell 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 the little, the little bun about any of that. Like, <laughs> definitely not in depth. Whenever they get older, maybe a little bit more of a conversation. I think it's just like those times when you felt like you needed to make a Facebook post. Maybe you should just go on a rant in the car. With everybody in there. <laughs> just kind of fucking be like, hey, man, I just want to like. I think I'm trying to think of how my dad would do it because my dad would engage with me a lot and he would be like, I think he would ask questions. He'd be like, what do you think about this? Or like, what do you think about that? And I would like say what I think. And then he'd be like, okay, well, that's right or that's wrong because of this and this and this and this. And then kind of like lay it out. And then like we'd have a conversation about it, you know? And I think I was receptive to like this idea that he's trying to teach me how to think about things. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm wrong about that. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't know that, you know? Mm-hmm. But I don't know if every kid's as receptive to that. Probably not. Probably not. It depends. It depends on the relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude, yeah, that's crazy to think about. Having to, having to navigate all this. Because, yeah, the people are just, we, we ain't got time to be thinking about all this shit, bro. And so, like, about or like doing research about fucking the Diddy and the Epstein's and the fucking inter interconnectedness between the fucking government and the mob or whatever, the Illuminati, whatever's going on. We don't really have time to dive fully, fully into it. Cause, like, we got fucking to go buy bread and milk and eggs and gas. And you gotta live your life. Some people, I guess, have more time and more freedom if they have whatever situation, whatever life situation is brought to them. Maybe they have more time to dive into these conspiracy theories and shit. 
or to dive into try to find facts and information. Yeah. But like for the most part, people ain't got time to be doing that shit. Man, people listen the people listen to podcasts. I think that's what even even the podcasters, they mm-hmm. got their information from a podcast probably. What? <laughs> like I think that's how a lot of people are doing it nowadays. Because mm-hmm. like you said, when do you have time? Right. You're driving to work, driving home, going to the grocery store, taking care of the house. Then you gotta eat and try to work out, try to take care of yourself in that time. There's not a lot of time in the fucking day. Yeah, some people follow journalists. And they have these journalists break stories to them. They, that's what Joe Rogan does. Follows a lot of journalists. But like, do you see that tweet about that thing? Hold on, pull that up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I guess he knows uh, a good avenue or a couple different avenues to go down to find like independent journalism. And people just trying to actually do what the fuck we're trying to do here as far as bring information and truth to the light and trying to spread good ideas and create legitimate discussions. Yeah. It's like, all right, this is what's happening here. Here are the facts instead of trying to paint us a different story. I know Joe's mentioned that. For sure, he's like I, I I I couldn't name a single person that he's named, but I know he's named at least probably two or three different like people. Matt like, Taibbi, I think, is one for sure. There we go. He's like, yeah, I love his shit. I love what he's doing with the journaling community. Yeah, or whatever he says about those people. Right. But that's what's up. Keep that shit going for sure. Keep that shit rocking. Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready? What do you think would happen <laughs> for, for what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous now. As a species, as a human race, aliens, as a generation. <laughs> Of people in our current day, are we ready as a unit, a global unit of people to be open to the idea that potentially there is some sort of an Illuminati-esque group of people? But maybe even that's maybe even a not that, that's a that's a big step. Maybe it's like a baby step. I think I think we might be ready. Is what I'm, but do you think we're ready for that baby step to maybe be like, oh, OK, this Diddy shit is going down. It's like, OK, let's, let's say hypotheticals. We wake up tomorrow, go on to Twitter. Or go on to Instagram. Breaking news. I'm not sure what the news source would be that would be legitimate. A legitimate news source that you trust. It's like, oh yeah, the fucking Diddy has a whole confession. These people are in on it. It's fucking I don't even know who to say. Let's say let's say it's like fucking Barack Obama, fucking Jay Z, and like LeBron and say Kevin it, Hart. Say a white guy. And fucking <laughs> Tom Hanks. Yeah, there we go. Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio. There we go. It's like we have confirmation, confirmation that these six people were heavily involved in this sex trafficking rink. We have all the evidence and all the shit. How do you think what would happen? What would happen to us as a people? Bruh. <laughs> LeBron James tough to swallow. <laughs> That's tough to swallow. I mean, I, I think not those names exactly, but you know what I'm saying. Like that caliber of person. Oh, like let's, it's, let's just keep it. I mean, LeBron, obviously not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I don't fucking know. Come on the pod and talk to us. You seem cool. <laughs> I don't know. The Illuminati hand shit's weird. I'm sure you've seen that video. But mm-hmm. other than that, I mean, but I like LeBron as an example. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a fucking culture shock to the, to the core of humanity. Yeah. We'd all be like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. How do we handle that? Would we handle that? I think... (sighs) It would be tough. There'd be so many questions because you'd be like, well, sports, movies, politics, restaurants. You'd be like, well, all these industries, it's not just like one thing. It's like all over the place. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. And then that would kind of like, it'd be like, what's going on there? How are they all, how's it so widespread? And it'd be like, well, these guys are plugs that lead up to a bigger, a bigger outlet of power. And that bigger outlet of power would be the the next step past the, the, the baby bigger step. step. <laughs> yeah. And that there is like organizations of people that, you know, the black market's been around forever, but. Organized crime has been around forever. Yeah. Like, you know, you find like the Clintons, like if you were to find out everything that the Clintons ever did ever. Like there's a lot of allegations that they were like selling coke in the town in Tennessee where they those kids got killed. Go look it up. It's a whole fucking thing. <laughs> um, there's a, I'm sure there's a lot of Clinton shit we could look up and find some crazy Clinton ex- conspiracies. Yeah, but if you don't want to go on the stretch to say that the Clintons dealing coke and killing kids, the Kennedys definitely bootlegged liquors. Like that's not a fucking secret. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like outlaw to president. How the fuck? It's like, we've got, like, all these rules, like, you got to be 35, you need to be born in America. How about, like, fucking, you know, you got a good track record. <laughs> <laughs> like, you did good with your life so yeah, far. Yeah, no ties to any illegal corporations or activities. Right. It's like, we just, 
there's something going on there. You know what I'm saying? There's something going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your initial question? How would we handle it? Yeah. Right. Well, what do you think the, the general state of people would be? Like in the workplace or just like, because we still have to go to fucking work. You know what I'm saying? We still got to continue on with everyday normal activities, whatever you had planned that next day or like tomorrow in this hypothetical. Whatever you got going on tomorrow is still going on. But it's just that everyone's news feed on all platforms across the fucking world are all talking about this crazy uncovering of high level, high profile celebrities, politicians, athletes. It's like the fucking iceberg is being exposed. Like we got the first level, they're big fucking names. It's going down. How would we, what do you think of the. Would people react or how would they? Well, let's, I'm trying to be like a, trying to give you a good answer, right? So I'm trying to think like pragmatically or like what what, what could people do? Right. Like how could people, like I think gun sales would go up a lot. Okay. <laughs> Just so people feel like they're doing something. I bought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a gun. I don't know. I fucking, I needed it, I think. Try to dump my kids. I don't trust nobody. Exactly, right? They're probably the first thing. I mean, that, that is the first thing that I would do. If denial. I, I think large-scale denial. We're already in denial. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I guess that, that would be, yeah, that, that immediate denial would be met with, or I guess the immediate denial would be just squashed. Because I think, yeah, we're already in a state of, like, eh, hesitant non-acceptance. We're like, yeah, maybe, I don't think so. At least some people. Some people are like full in, oh, yeah, this is fucking full. Fucking get them all. Get them all. They're all, they're all, they're all bad people. And then some people have no completely oblivious. And some people might be teetering on the fence with the idea. But then we have all this evidence, and then it comes out. There would be maybe an initial denial, but then it would be fucking... I think that there's a term for it. It's a... Uh, I remember hearing this term whenever I watched... It was like a YouTube document or YouTube series, like a 10-part series, talking about the fucked upness of child sex trafficking and like the government and just kind of fucked up shit. I think it was called Falkaball, some shit like that. But there's a word, cognitive dissonance, yeah. I think is what it's called. Where you're just like, you can't even, you don't know, you can't, you can't make sense of what's happening. Yeah, you don't wrap your mind around you it. You can't. Yeah, you literally are incapable of like accepting what is. You're just like, what the fuck is happening? I think we'd be in a state of that. A lot of people. Yeah, there's that. Like, there's what? that. Well, also, what's our answer? Yeah. Are you going to start your own country? <laughs> like you're fucking. <laughs> I'm seceding. Go find me in Texas. Yeah, I think there would be a lot of people moving to Texas. You think so? Yeah. Like, people moving to... I think it would start with Texas because that's the easy answer. But then it would more generalize to people moving towards, like, uh, large areas of land. Like Montana. Like what Kanye West did, you know? Like, getting out in some space. Get a plot of land. Yeah. Bunkering down. Make a little commune. Yeah. But then ultimately, dude, I'm telling you, like... This time marches on. People would fucking forget, dude. We got to keep going. You got to keep going. We got to keep going. 10 years passes. 20 years passes. 60-year-olds die. You know? 30-year-olds become 50-year-olds. Kids don't listen to 50-year-olds. <laughs> like, kids don't know about any of that shit. And then you can tell them, paint them whatever picture you want of America. You can make whatever movies you want. Make it look any way you want, you know? Hmm. I think that that's the, the, tick, t- the TikTok has been the... The TikTok is fucking up the soil. It's like, we, we're not growing fucking, like, I think that the young people have a very, the, the young people have sometimes such a dramatically skewed perception of what's going on compared to what I think like 30 to like 60 year olds have that I'm like, how the fuck is it so skewed? How the fuck? Like, that's crazy. And then I think it's because it's, it's something to do with TikTok. It's something to do with these like, I don't know exactly because I'm not on TikTok like that. So I don't see all like the political stuff that people see or like the society stuff that people see or the like virtue signaling or the there was just a lot of social engineering that happened like maybe within the last five years where it just felt like they really were trying to manipulate us into feeling bad for groups of people and for like really going out of our way for gay people's rights, black people's rights, trans rights. And not that those people shouldn't have rights and they shouldn't have support, but it was just this real like outward like push to try to make me be more empathetic for those things which like i'm like open and willing to seeing if i need to be more empathetic to those things <laughs> <laughs> i'm all for it i'm uh, sure let me hear your case like mm-hmm. but i think that like you know there's some stuff where they they went a little bit too far like the transgender stuff in sports like like the lady on Joe Rogan who won first place, she tied first place, 
Like that happening in swimming is fucking rare. They go to like the hundredth of the second. Yeah. And she tied for first place with tied. with uh Leah Thomas. Yeah. Well, that's the lady that I'm talking about, right? Yeah. She tied with a swimmer who was formerly a man, had oh, that, that, that's Leah Thomas. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I know you're talking about Pastor Red had her on his, his their their podcast or whatever. The lady I'm talking about? Yeah. That that tied? Yeah. Pastor Red was on her Wow, that's crazy. She was on his. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Damn, dude, that's nuts. That's tight. Yeah, I, I I watched a Joe Rogan episode. It, it was on like two or three months ago, mm. so that's why I heard about this. But yeah, she tied the, you know, I don't know the exact terminology, but the former gentleman who had Leah Thomas, Leah Thomas. There we go, <laughs> uh, Leah Thomas. Who? Well, the other thing about Leah Thomas is like she, what's the word? Transferred. Transferred. <laughs> Let me put in a formal transfer request. <laughs> Transition. Transition. <laughs> She'd been swimming before with the men. Yes. Very average. Not doing well. I think it was like ranked 400 something, 460 in the in the nation. Right. Four, yeah. Four plus. Super. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be rude here, but I was an average athlete amongst collegiate competitors. I would have been in the same kind of ranking pool, mm-hmm. if not worse. But then transitioned and then was like dominating. Number one. Far and away number one. And then this young woman who I'm talking about, she competed at the state national highest level competition and tied first place. Crazy, right? And then they had one trophy and then they like kind of like told her like, hey, we're, we're going to give this trophy to Leah Thomas because it's kind of incredible that she's here and that she won and, and her story. And it's just the biggest thing in the country right now. So we're going to send you home, but we're going to get something to you. And they didn't even send her a trophy, from what I heard. Like she never got like a equivalent trophy. Mm-hmm. It was like a, some kind of award or plaque or representation of the state championship or whatever national championship. How crazy is that? Hold on here. How, how hold on? This is just like God working. It's like in the story that is life of the story of stories. It's like we're all we all have our own stories in the fucking big book of stories. And like at this this particular point in the story, it's like a social teetering it's like wait, wait, wait what, what's happening here and then this was like an instance where the story of life was able to tell us oh we're leaning this way now because it was literally down to the fucking hundredth of a second how what are the odds of that that's what are the fucking odds of that's that? god it's like it's like dink, like at the same time like it's hard to do that with yourself probably you know what i'm saying yeah. to touch your fingers at the same time like, at the exact same millisecond right yeah with like with, to, with your own hand it mm-hmm. wouldn't happen even when you think it's happening it's probably not happening it probably happened like half the time if you like tried as hard as you could to like touch at the same time you probably get five out of ten you should make a game you, know you should make an app dude <laughs> You're like, yeah. it's like what are the odds of that it's like so fucking low and then for that situation to become a thing because of that crazy low probability thing happening and then it was just like oh yeah society's we're leaning this way now this is this is what's happening here it's like what the fuck when did this happen what the how is that even how how can we like why can't we like share the fucking trophy or like get, both get a picture with it or whatever or like she gets a picture I get a picture if I were Leah if I were Leah Thomas I'd be like I don't want it let's let's if let's I, if you're not gonna get one I don't want one you know and if you want to take it that'd be kind of weird but I get it but let's just both not have one <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah right wouldn't you not want to do that wouldn't yeah. that feel wrong yeah I would think so mm-hmm. but then again that is the type of person that would I don't know I don't know. I was about to go down accusation lane, hypothetical lane, <laughs> putting sure, it, putting. Sure. Put, I know. Oh, it's so tough. I was trying to, to find the the origin of. I was trying to. I guess I was trying to input my own theory of what their intent was behind the transition. Sometimes you know it seems like the people that are in these situations are, you know, damn the type that wouldn't share the trophy. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. There you go. We could we could make it a prettier statement, but that's pretty much what I'm trying to get to. Is it? It seems like you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what the fuck, bro? So that was just they like, got other stuff going on, crazy life, thing. and I don't know, and I'm and I definitely you know there's people in Joe Rogan definitely says all the time that there's definitely like some people that it definitely feels like were a woman born into a man's body, and that like that person genuinely like transitioning helped them a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I also think that there's some cases where it's just some other stuff going on, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, so then, bring it back to Leah Thomas. I just want to go. Some, I just want to unravel that string sometimes, because we're getting so socially. Well, to take it back even further is that we're getting so socially engineered, and it feels like that Leah Thomas was like. Uh, it, it gave me something to point to, like you said, like hold, right here. This is where I'm like, I feel like we're something is, a shift happened, or we like 
I felt all this influence happening. And then now we got to this moment and this thing happened and it just feels like we're shifting yeah. and I'm being shifted. And I'm not sure that I like that. Yeah. Was that, was that before or after, um, what is that lady's name? <sighs> the Kardashian's father. Yeah. Here we go. Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner. Right. Bruce Jenner. Yes. What's her name now? Caitlyn. Caitlyn. There it is. Yeah. Was that before or after Caitlyn Jenner? Way after. Way after? Yeah. Okay. Caitlyn's been Caitlyn for three or four years now. Longer than that. Right. That's been like eight to ten, yeah. I didn't want to say. Yeah, I was like in college, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Where's the time go, man? What the fuck, man? Yeah. I'm pretty sure so she transitioned many a year ago. And then uh, didn't she win like Woman of the Year? Yeah. Like the same year? Yeah. I think that might have been another like we're pushing you this way. We're pushing you this that way. That one was just kind of a head scratcher. You thought maybe Rolling Stone or whoever it was was making a statement. Trying to be trendy. They're fine. trying to push us this way. You're yeah, pushing us this way. <laughs> See, the more times, how many times are you going to push? It's like kicking my shoe. You know, kicking once, maybe you were just walking. It maybe, happens. Maybe that, I walked into you. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I should have put my foot there. Yeah. Move my foot a little bit. <laughs> that perception. <laughs> totally, dude. I get it. <laughs> but uh, like three or four times, you're like, D- dude, there's something going on here. You know, like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, you're drunk. Are you drunk? <laughs> exactly. Well, you're stepping on me, America, bro. are you drunk? What the like, fuck's happening here? This is weird. But that's what I felt about... Unless it's on purpose. If it's on purpose, it's really, really weird. Right. What and fuck? not that Caitlyn Jenner winning Woman of the Year or Leah Thomas taking the trophy are necessarily kicks in the shoe. I don't want to... I'm not trying to... There's some women that might feel like that, and I can't fucking... I'm not going to tell them how to feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I'm, I'm not claiming that. Mm-hmm. But... It just, yeah, there's there's a lot of social engineering going on, like a ton of it. And it's kind of like weird. And this All hypothetical. South Park was making fun of it all of it the whole way there, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's definitely, I guess social engineering is a strong word. But I definitely think we've been, you know, some people might phrase it more like there's been a civil rights movement, a postmodernist civil rights movement of the 2000s for... Equality. Yeah, for equality. And, uh, and um, empathy. What's the other word? Not equality, but uh, not equity, but uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Equal opportunity, opportunity. Uh, it's like equality, but it's a different equal. word. Equal. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's like uh, come on, it's okay. Understanding, it's like uh, let's just swim in this. <laughs> <laughs> what's the fucking word? It's the fucking uh, tolerance. There, there we, we go. go. Tolerance. <laughs> Dude, I, I I have all the tolerance in the world Jesus. for that moment right there. <laughs> it didn't make for great podcast material, but I also think that's hilarious when we can't think of what we're saying. Mm. I heard Joe Rogan talking about He's like, the worst part is when you forgot what you were saying. I'm just like, uh, well, uh, what the fuck were we talking about? He's like, and you just need a little thread. You just need like a trains, trains, and then we were running down the... No, run it back. Is this that crazy how our memory works? It's like, well, just one thing, we'll set it off and bring it right back to our whole... And then I stopped and I'm like, Joe Rogan is just talking about forgetting things on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the worst is when we forget stuff, right? That shit sucks. So I was like, don't, don't be afraid of anything. It feels terrible. On this show, fucking, you can just talk about it. Oh, we're chilling. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But I think you're k- kind of hitting it on the head. It's like with, uh, it could be a postmodernistic equality, tolerance, empathy, equality. We're all chill here. We're all good here. We're all chill. You're good the way you are. We love you. That's what TikTok's calling for. That's uh-huh. what the colleges are calling for. Mm-hmm. But there's just stuff going on, man. There's just stuff <laughs> going on, man. Like Elon Musk's kid? Have you heard the story? No, what happened? Elon mm-hmm. Musk's child. He has like 11, right? I don't know. Yeah. I want to say he has like 11 kids. Apparently he's going off. He's just popping them out. He's not popping them out, but he's, Apparently- just, he's putting them in. <laughs> Someone else is popping him out. <laughs> Apparently, it's some representation of how he believes that there's a real population problem in the next 20 years, but that's a whole different topic. But with Elon Musk, and I don't know, this might have been an AI generated video. I'm not sure. Fuck. Apparently, there's a Lex Friedman interview where they talk about it. Okay. But I guess one of his children, God, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I'll make it quick. But <laughs> <laughs> we can find it. Allegedly, one of his kids uh, was, you know, through. A counselor, someone at school, communicated that they're having some like body dysmorphia, some um, gender dysmorphia. Okay. And uh, basically, through counseling with this kid, the kid ended up signing paperwork 
to have themselves did the thing be transitioned yeah but also sign paperwork to exclude the parent the parent from having any kind of that was a thing that's, that's been going on right right over the last like five no not less than that a couple of years right yeah and apparently it even happened to like elon musk no fucking way this yeah. is recently yeah i because I, I was so mind blown that i didn't know anything about it that i told myself like yo i gotta go watch that lex Friedman interview because i don't know what the fuck they're talking about that's crazy and i never did okay <laughs> so so that's why I'm like hesitant to bring it up, but, but allegedly, but that does happen to other people, if not to Elon Musk. We've been hearing stories about that, and that's fucking super scary, bro. That's crazy, bro. It's crazy. That's insane. That's insane. How, that's insane, how old is the dude. the kid? Uh, let's do like let's do some light Google. A light Goog. Give it a light Goog. <laughs> let's do a light. Let's chat. Easy Goog. I trust ChatGPT more with this. Goog light. Yeah, because that's absolutely insanity. Because I know he has 11, 11 children ballpark, plus or minus a couple. I'm sure somewhere in that area. So I'm sure they range in ages. I wonder because of I wonder what ages child is because I've heard that there's a. I forget. I'm not sure what what the age threshold is, but there is a. I remember Jordan Peterson talking about it. I think on Joe Rogan, where they're saying that, that that's that's happening to where the the child can go to the counselor and then just sign something that is like an NDA or not NDA, but does the same sort of effect to where the counselor doesn't have to tell the parents or the legal guardian what's going on. They're just gonna get them on this medication or not even medication like these uh blockers or whatever these hormone replacement therapy kind of shit. And just wean them into their own thing that they want to do. And it's like 12-year-olds doing that shit. Maybe younger. Maybe you have to be a little bit older. Like maybe like 10, 10 and older. I'm not sure what the what the threshold is. But there is a threshold where it's like you can just go about an entire gender change transition and not even have to tell your parents. I think California is a thing. In Texas, I fucking doubt it. I fucking doubt it, player. It ain't happening here. Where's he even from? He's from like Africa or some shit. But I'm sure he has his kids are living. I would guess maybe in Texas, maybe spread throughout the U.S., California. The this, anything coming up? Yeah, yeah. This trend or what's what's spreading? I'm sorry. No, I think I was saying like as far as where where his family resides, like where they live. Oh yeah, who knows, right? So, like what school is going to allow this to happen, or I guess what counselor or what, <laughs> who, who what what person is this kid in communication with that would like do this? And I think that typically would happen in California, is where I've. I yeah, this is Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. It says, uh, this, so this is what ChatGPT came back with. It said, Elon Musk's daughter, Vivian Jenna Wilson, formerly known as Xavier Alexander Musk, legally changed her name and gender in June 2022 at the age of 18. In her petition to the Los Angeles County Superior Court, she stated that she no longer lives with or wishes to be related to her biological father in any way, shape, or form. 2022? Yes. Holy shit. And then let me read you two more paragraphs. Vivian is one of Musk's five children with his first wife, uh, generally maintained a low public profile. In 2024, Elon Musk discussed his daughter's transition in an interview with psychologist Jordan Peterson. Oh, shit on so, my cheats. Yeah, it's not, it's not Lex. It's Jordan Peterson. Oh, fudge. And then um, he expressed regret over consenting to her gender-affirming treatment, claiming he was misled into believing it was necessary to prevent potential harm. Musk stated, I was essentially tricked into signing documents for one of my older boys, Xavier. They call it dead naming for a reason. The reason they call it dead naming, blank, 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 killed by the woke mind virus. I don't know. It just kind of trails off right there. Dead minding? What does it say? It says in uh, Elon Musk quote, he says, I was essentially tricked into signing documents for one of my older boys, Xavier, dot, dot, dot. They call it dead naming for a reason. The reason they call it dead, dot, 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 uh, and then it says killed by the woke mind virus. I don't know if he's making a joke right there, <clears throat> but it says Elon Musk says his trans daughter Vivian was killed by the woke mind virus. Elon Musk claimed that he was deceived into allowing the medical gender reassignment of his transgender daughter, sensationally saying she was killed by the woke mind virus. I was essentially tricked into signing documents for one of my older boys. This is before I had any understanding of what was going on. COVID was going on, so there was a lot of confusion, and I was told Xavier might commit suicide if he didn't make the change. Son of a snitch, dude. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, Tesla CEO then argued to Peterson that the concept of allowing tr children to transition is incredibly evil. So Peterson claimed there was no clinical evidence backing up the notion that his child needed medical intervention, to which Musk replied, I agree with you that the people who have been promoting this should go to prison. 
Musk said that he essentially lost his child and reiterated that he had been tricked. I mean, he's like literally the smartest guy in the world. And if it's your own kid, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, this is where they say they call it dead naming for a reason. The reason they call it dead naming is because your son is dead. My son Xavier is dead, killed by the woke mind virus. I don't know. Dead naming is the act of using a transgender person's former name against their wishes, intentionally or not. Oh, so like if a trans mm. person, if you're calling them by their old name, then they say, don't dead name me. Because they're saying that person, that person is, dead. is dead. So he's saying that they, if, if my own son feels like that, is going to tell me that that person is dead then I blame them for killing my my son, more or less. The thing that we're kind of talking about? Yeah. Or like alluding to with the some of this engineering? Yeah, that's what, they really don't get into it too much, which is kind of like leaves room to say like, well, how do you get, Elon Musk, how do you get tricked into that? You know, it's your kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I guess just having the information of like, oh, they're not doing too hot. They're not doing well. This is like life or death. Literally became life or death. Well, he's in the dimension of suicide. It's like, oh shit. I guess I don't know. I guess you would assume that he would kind of even a bit, have a little bit more due diligence and like trying to figure out what the fuck's going on with his kid or like what the what what they're actually offering or what the what's the what's the fine print in this contract I'm signing. Yeah, yeah. One of the smartest guys in the fucking world. He's in the fucking to, world, to kid. Read that for him. What? You pay someone to read the contract <laughs> yeah. for him. Doesn't seem right. That's crazy. I had no idea. Right. No yeah. fucking clue. Right. I saw it on Jordan. I saw the clip of him and Jordan Peterson talking about it a little bit, and I was like, what the fuck? You know. It sounded to me then how I knew nothing about that. When was the interview? Did it say? 2024. Oh, so it was recently. Yeah. But then it happened. Because I, I think I remember seeing something about a Jordan Peterson, Elon Musk episode on maybe Jordan Peterson's podcast. So that, that had to be it in the last couple yeah. of months. So I think in that podcast, I've heard Jordan Peterson allude to it, and I know Elon Musk of those quotes was alluding to it, but basically that people are to some degree like potentially like hearing one symptom and then being like, oh yeah, well they definitely need to like transition. That's the answer for sure. Like they're going to, what I'm hearing is that it's so bad and it's only going to keep getting so worse that the only thing that we can do is do this. And actually you're a terrible person if you don't want to let this happen for your kid because they have this malady and you don't want to take the proper steps and they're going to fucking be miserable. You're just going to let your kid be miserable because you're not open-minded enough. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe they go through with it and then maybe he watches his kid not be fucking happy. Maybe he's like, oh, fuck, did we fuck this kid? Now he's fucking struggling, you know, like. He's living a lie or whatever the fuck, you know, like, but I think also if your kid transitioned and then they were like, oh, yes, I'm happy now. Like, things are great. Like, my chemistry is working. My body's where it's supposed to be. I feel fulfilled, complete, actualized. I don't think he would be sitting here saying those are evil people. He'd probably be like thankful and happy and be like, yeah, it's true. He'd probably be an advocate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But he's not. Because they're saying that these people are kind of manipulating the stats and pushing people towards it and kind of funneling them towards transition like they want it to be an industry or something. Yeah, like the, I know Joe's talked about the numbers, but doctors getting paid astronomical amounts for these procedures. Like they're getting paid, what is it? I think, I don't want to be grossly off, but I want to say like 200,000, like 200 racks. For a sex change procedure? Mm -hmm. I'll just ask that should be too mm -hmm. right now. I'm pretty sure that was a number he was throwing around. That these doctors are getting upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars <clears throat> to perform each of these operations every time. You can do multiple in a day. So it's like, that seems like a pretty heavy, heavy financial incentive. The same way that you would fucking financially incentivize prescription drugs. It's like you, you financially incentivize them so they get pushed more. So it's like you're financially incentivizing this transition surgery so it gets done more. How is this... I guess, how do they make money off of that? Maybe it's not about making money. Maybe it's about the fucking engineer. Yeah. It says that the market was at $1.9 billion and it's probably going to grow to $5 billion in the next decade. Whoa. But it was saying something more along the lines of like, this one was saying like $20,000 maybe. Okay. But I, I don't know for sure, you know. Shit, at least 20 grand. Even that's a lot. It's a lot of money, dude. I mean, shit, bro. If you do five of those operation. in a day, make 100 racks in a day, the fuck? Yeah, you can make a million a year. 
You can be a millionaire. Really quick. Really quick. Really fast. <laughs> yeah, that's enough incentive. <laughs> it's actually it's actually better that it's lower. In the sense where I see what you're saying. So they have to do more to make more. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. So you could if you were a a manipulator that wanted more of this to happen, you'd be like, Yeah, yeah. We need them to do about five a day. And that's about what, fifty a week? Wait, that math doesn't work out. <laughs> five a day. <laughs> we're getting over, days. over time baby with more days in the week now <laughs> but you, can, you get what I'm saying 25 they do 5 for 5 I don't know bro there's a lot of people that would also say you know I'm a cis white male who doesn't like yeah <laughs> yeah you fucking white guy fucking racist white guy over here <laughs> intolerant and shit yeah you love Elon Musk <laughs> and Donald Trump and <laughs> Sucking on gun barrels. Yeah. Yeah. Stroking the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Stroking that strong shaft. Yeah. I think that they would definitely. Uh, <laughs> some people would just think I'm a bigot. And they'd be like, bro, I can't believe the cis white male is about to tell me about what a transgender person goes through or what Elon Musk's daughter went through having to live with that piece of shit that wasn't there for her and didn't. Mm-hmm. He signed the paperwork because he wasn't around very much. So he was just like, yeah, sure. Here you go. Must not have known. Yeah, right. What's going on? Right. There's some perspective there that we're just fucking the patriarchy. Where did that perspective come from? <laughs> what do you mean? I just think I'm a person with an opinion looking at the stats, but where <laughs> <laughs> somewhere along the line, that opinion got somewhat invalidated because it was coming from a white male. Because we have a skewed perspective because we can't understand tyranny. We're opening up all of Pandora's box right now. All but the boxes. <laughs> I'm saying I think that came from TikTok. You know what I'm saying? This destabilization of... Maybe just social media in general. Or you think TikTok specifically? It was like, it's like trying to, trying I, to push I, some shit. I never see that shit on Instagram. Did you ever see any cis white male posts on Instagram? <sighs> Fucking Tumblr, bro. Probably Tumblr. Fucking Tumblr, bro, on TikTok early days. Yeah, I don't... I don't interact much. That's the other thing we were talking about that earlier. I guess I, I do information gather, but I guess I never came across anything like that. Or I guess like you're talking about posts trying to, not virtue signal, but trying to like just paint opinions about other opinions. Yeah. It's like people right. with these opinions, where'd you get these opinions from, huh? Yeah. The fuck. Garbage ass opinions. <laughs> garbage people with garbage opinions. You gotta, you gotta burn America to the ground thinking like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're saying you have seen some of that like on TikTok? Oh, yeah. Well, I haven't seen it, but I know it's there. My sister's told me that it's there. There's definitely a lot of people saying, I can't believe blah, 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 because blah, 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 like going off ranting. Mm -hmm. There's people in the comments. And then these are hurt people. These are hurt people. Yeah, 16 to 24. Some kind of following and some kind of audience. They're just spewing what the fuck. You ever fucking, you ever said some shit and you're like, (laughs) realize later as an adult, you didn't know what the fuck you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure all the time. <laughs> yeah. that Some of that's going on, dude. Some of that's going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. People, kids just being kids. I guess at what point do you like consider yourself like an adult or like you're – most people I guess would say like 17, 18, you're like an adult legally, whatever. I don't know. I think – I guess your mind is – for males, your mind is developing until 25. So even then like you're an adult at that point. Yeah. But yeah, if you're prior to that, if you're just like a kid or like a young person, like you think you're an adult. You feel like an adult. You think you know everything, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just you're just saying what you think. You're saying what you feel. It makes sense. For sure. It's valid. And sometimes it's like, man, my Spanish teacher one time said, like, you guys know enough Spanish to be dangerous now. Because you don't really know what the fuck you're saying. It's like, so you could end up saying some shit on accident. You'd be like, disrespect mm-hmm. somebody. Whereas like in English, you get into a conversation with like, certain business folk or certain respected people. It's like, you don't want to have a, a social faux pas. You know, speak real carefully. Make sure we get all our fucking P's and Q's. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Stuff like that. Well, Spanish, you're just like fucking, don't esta la preguntas? <laughs> you, don't fucking, you don't fucking know you. You can't be careful, you know? And I think that's, yeah. a, that's the same thing with, uh, like, sometimes it's the same thing about kids talking politics. It's like, even me, I, like right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like right now, I, still same thing. I'm Later, I might be like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that because I was promoting this idea in this time when I really shouldn't be promoting this idea. It's always hard to know. But some mm. of this shit is fucking crazy. Some of it is wild. Like, wild. Like the cis white male, like, yeah, you. we could just say like, you could say, yes, that's still true today. It just doesn't have enough fire underneath the fucking stove to really cook that meat. That is, fuck white people. <laughs> but... It is there. You do have a skewed perspective because you've always been 
what's the word where you get privileges privileged, privileged. there yeah. we go <laughs> right sure get it that that might be true i don't it's out there but then there's other people that might be like, well, that was just like a fucking trend. You know what I'm saying? We hit on everybody from time to time. So what the fuck? You're going to be a bitch about it? It's like, your turn. Yeah, it's just your turn, bro. <laughs> In which case, I'm like, okay, it's cool. At least you're not hating on me. At least you're not picking on me every day. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. But I think that if you look at... Just, we're going we're gonna to jump a gap here, okay? Jump it. Kamala Harris. Kamala. I think a lot of her platform is that she's not a cis white male. She's definitely not. I think it's like the majority of her platform is that she's not who they deem Donald Trump to be, which is this tyrannical asshole, fuck you, grab him by the pussy. <laughs> Cis white male, bro. He said that shit. Yeah, he, did. he fucking said that shit. It's like, he was our president. Yeah. He might be the president he, again. I gotta. Uh, he said that shit. I think I'm leaning in that direction. <laughs> I gotta hope he wins. <laughs> oh my God. What a fucking crazy timeline, dude! Come on, dog. You telling me this motherfucking? Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying, hundred percent. That's a large part of her platform and her uh, her draw. <laughs> She's yeah. not a white guy. <laughs> They're pretty much like just don't fuck it up. Just like stop saying stupid shit if you mm-hmm. could. If you could just like get in debates and sound kind of knowledgeable, that'd be great. Because we just got to get over the over the your that you're not competent hump. If yeah. they view you as competent, they should pick you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know any of her policies. I don't know the the, the legitimate power she has, or uh, not even power per se, but information and access to pol- or like n- know how of how to navigate politics and foreign policy. Does she have that? I have no I fucking idea. I have no fucking idea. I couldn't tell you. But from what I've gathered, people think that she doesn't. At least for from what I've heard from Joe Rogan. Yeah, right. That's a lot of my <laughs> opinion. I get it. I get it. I'm the same. You. Can I didn't me- watch the debate. I'm sorry. You could invalidate everything I'm saying because most of my information comes from Joe Rogan if you wanted to. You could paint any picture you want to paint, you know? Mm-hmm. It's my right. For sure. As an American <laughs> to be uninformed. Got a gun to protect that right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But but at the same time, it's just like, oh, man, what, what were Obama's policies? I don't think we really knew. I think we did know more back then, actually. It was more, more prevalent. It's like, yeah, he believes in... Because Obamacare mm-hmm. and like liberal policies were like a bigger deal, big environmental, environmental stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's just kind of like liberal, or you know, that's kind of like that direction. Bro, anyway. he was just a cool black guy. <laughs> he could talk well. The same reason I like watching Denzel Washington. Same reason we voted for Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. He could deliver a speech. Fucking A, bro. He, bro, he, he could talk. That's my guy. That's what, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, fucking, that's my dog. I think that's what people want to say. Mm. I think people just want to look on TV and say, that's my dog. He's got it. <laughs> He's got it. That guy taking care of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that that, <laughs> I don't think the policies matter much. Nope. <laughs> I don't think the policies matter much. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's a big popularity contest, bro, for real. For real. For real. Who could talk the best? Like being the class president, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who knows the best things to say to the right groups of people? Be cool with the right cliques. Yeah, but competency test? Can we just have like a combine for presidents? They should have their IQ like displayed publicly. Or not. Like as a stat height, weight, or IQ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> height, weight, age, IQ. Not a bad idea. Hometown? Not a terrible idea. Give me more of a picture here. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I think the competence test, the IQ would be, that, that'd be kind of a cool stat to have with the presidential candidate. You know what? <sighs> so many things that could happen. Like, imagine if Donald Trump had up, like, two higher IQ points than Kamala Harris. Field day. <laughs> Field day. It's his birthday, <laughs> dude. Fuck. <laughs> but then it wouldn't necessarily equate. I guess we could look, it could look, we could look back and do some data research. It's like, all right, who had the best presidencies and who has legitimate, like, good tactics and good political mind and who had a how can we correlate that to the iq in any way like at all maybe the smarter people are worse people or like worse rulers you might start 20 years of study <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's true it's true i think it's a fair i think it's a fair stat to ask for for my president what's your iq what do you want to know huh it's like, are like, you dumb? What do you want to know? Are you a dumb person? <laughs> or are you a smart person? <laughs> They're obviously relatively smart. Are you at least mid? Like <laughs> can you be mid plus what if it's just like you get you get fucking Joe Biden and it's just like it accidentally pulls up his because of the format it got installed and it's like eighty six. You're just like, oh my god. 
<laughs> no. That's the TV show episode of what we just did. Uh-huh. They get that installed and they finally get it through and then they get to the debate and then Joe Biden wills himself out in a wheelchair because he's still the president and it's just like so low. It's astonishing <laughs> and everyone's appalled that we ever elected that guy. Oh, God. It could be true. I mean, man, do you think – is it – oh, and this is the conversation we were having at your birthday at Blue Prime and we stopped because the waitress came over and we could never find the trail. We're back. We're back. We finally made it back. We're back, baby. That was months ago. <laughs> What happened? Do you think that higher intelligence directly correlates to more success uh, or better life? I think that's that's where, right where we're talking about. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think we may have, may have also mentioned the idea that being a smarter person or having a higher IQ actually might make it easier to have a worse life or to be too smart for your own good. You know, it's like to, to understand the risk of everything. Or maybe like Rick and Morty, like Rick Sanchez, like you're so smart that it's like you become nihilistic because like you're like right. the smartest person in the world. Yeah, you're like, this life is all pain and suffering. Like, oh, everyone's stupid. I've become smart Damn enough it. to realize that everyone's stupid and that hurts me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So maybe, I don't think it would directly correlate every time to where everyone who has a enjoyable, successful life has a higher IQ than the next neighbor. I think we could, I think it'd be back and forth, you know, because some people could be really smart in something like high, have a high IQ and be really good at numbers, but like have a really shitty personal life and like not know how to connect with their kids or how to fucking talk to their wife or their loved one, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was thinking about, I don't know. I had like a, there's like a skit come to mind. It was like a random skit, but it was just like personifying and pointing to the idea of like kind of what we're talking about. It's like, it's like, it's, it's two, it's like a side by side split screen. It's like two different scenarios that are going on at the same time. And it's like the, the, the scene in both, splits is just someone waking up and then in one of the splits is just like someone waking up in like like a house that i'm living in it's like super chill like nothing crazy but like we have like like a home you know what i'm saying we have like a household and like love and like we're good we're chill we're like we interact with each other we're all it's like on an upward vibration like we're, we're we're in a good spot we're grateful like we have everything we need but like it's it's a small house but then, like, on the other side, it's, like, someone, like, waking up in a fucking mansion. But they don't have anybody in the bed with them. And they're, like, drunk as fuck or, like, hungover as fuck from drinking the night before. And they're, like, sloppily walking around their mansion. And then there's, like, it's just empty. There's no one in there. No, like, there's no liveliness. There's no plant life. Even the plants that are in there are dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So shit like that. It's, like, which one would, which one's better? Like, which one's a better life? Right. It's, like, that person's net worth is, like, $1.2 million. It's, like, this person's net worth is, like, $1,000. True. It's like, which one's a better life? It's like, and this person might be smarter. Like, the person might have a higher IQ, a better business savvy, a little bit more, not political, but whatever. Sure. Connections, social connections that lead you to more opportunity. So they could be have a, a better financial life and a better house and a car and more financial stability, more freedom to go on vacations, whatever. But yeah, it's like, what do you value? It's like, what's, what's, what would be a better existence? It's kind of up for debate. You kind of, right. you kind of make it yourself. You kind of like decide your own value system right. with the help of hopefully of some other good influences and some other people or other whatever movies or whatever the fuck you see in, in a movie you're like oh yeah I want to live like that or if like if you're sur- lucky lucky enough to be surrounded by family members who are doing it right or have like a good household it's like yeah I like going over to my Aunt Carol's house or whatever the fuck every time I'm over there it's like it's clean like they got the dog it's a nice dog it's a nice house they always got fucking food in the fridge or whatever <laughs> they, got, they got the coolest fucking sodas they got sodas I never heard of. All that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, maybe you have an example like that in your life. You're like, okay, I want to do it like that. Yeah. So you kind of decide. But I, I don't know. I just had like the the juxtaposing idea of having those two side-by-sides of like a, just waking up in your house, whatever that is for you. It's like, it doesn't have to be a large, crazy house. It's just like, you. what's better? It's kind of up to you. Right. Some people be like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with not having like a formal relationship and like no kids and having my own giant mansion, doing my own thing in my own time, not having to check in with anybody. I kind of like that. Or maybe you're just alone for a little bit of time mm-hmm. too. Like even if you're just like alone for like two or three years, you know what I'm saying? It's like not the end of the world. Yeah. I think sometimes we think like being alone is being alone forever. You know what I'm saying? But just because I've had that same image pop up in my own mind where I was like, it was... I had the same same idea, but it was like being on an airplane, like a private jet, but then being alone on a private jet. And I was like, you're wealthy, you're on a private jet, but then you're like alone. It's like sad, you know? But like, 
I think that that I let that be a motivator for me to like not want to be alone before. Whereas I should have just been like, that's like a fear almost. It's like sometimes you could be alone for a little bit of time and it's like, okay, you know, or like good. Yeah. Fuck yeah. But I think it's like, what's better is the question. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you, what's the, how do you want to live? You know, Mm -hmm. do you want to live like this? Do you want to live like that? Like also like, let's say like, like you're alone in the mansion and then, you know, let's say that person does meet a partner and then they get married and then now he has a wife, but then like their relationship just sucks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, then definitely the guy Mm -hmm. that is in a happy home who is in a more affordable home, whatever, smaller, less money. He's obviously living a better life, you know? <clears throat> At that point, it's like less comparable. So it's like, yeah, 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 seriously. <laughs> yeah. You need like your relationship to be good and you need like the money to be good and like the home to be good and like organization and peace. It's like so many layers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you organize all of that? It's like, I don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? There's only so many decisions I can make every day, you know? Yeah. Mm. I think it's this, uh, it's this fucking, it's this fucking cultivating you're doing the whole time. It's like, you, you're just, it's like, yeah, man, because it's like IQ is a thing, you know, like politics are a thing, religion's a thing, hometown, culture, you know, family life, what your mom was like to you, what your dad was like to you, grew up with siblings, grew up a single child. So many factors that can create these different thinking processes, mm-hmm. right? So you're determining like which president would be like the most effective. It's like, well, for a wide receiver, if they're 6'3", run a 4'3", and then went to Alabama. It's like, that's the most effective wide receiver usually. That boy's pretty – you're in good hands with him. I'll drop that guy. All state. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Probably good on that. doesn't matter what the name is. And there might be certain demographics we start finding in presidents. So it's like, you know, if they're this with this with that, usually it's a good president. You know, when in doubt, <laughs> they're like in the fucking Fallout series, when he's like, when times are tough, vote for someone from 44 or – when to- uh, it's a rhyme, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And they're basically saying, whenever things get bad, we usually vote for someone for 43 for president. It's like, I think that would probably become a thing in our culture now. It's like, I don't know, I just vote for the the guy that checks the box, you know? The guy that's the... Went to the good school or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Maybe it's like, minority president from, like, uh, that went to a, minority president that went to a good school and has a high IQ. It's like, those are the three factors that usually lead for the perfect leader could end up being like that all that to say though is it's too much uh i couldn't actually tell you which one would be the better leader in reality or like the better athlete or the better you know businessman but it's like i know that i don't think any of those factors determine any of those things you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i think it's just like your ability it's a different factor it's like your ability to cultivate the good life your ability to cultivate like good decisions and like good energy and like holistic spirituality, like your actual, how do you really feel like you, what's your truth? Can you be aligned with that? Can you, can you let that manifest in your life slowly, but surely? I think that's how you end up on top of the mountain with this great job and this great relationship and these great family life with your kids, all this connections and like weird plugs It's like, I met a guy that had a thing, and now I got a basketball court in my backyard. Never thought that was going to happen, but now I've got a basketball court in my backyard. It's like, Mm -hmm. things can't stop going right for this guy. It's like, because he cultivated the good life, wherever the fuck you were. You're working in a fucking, what's that thing where they break rocks? Pickaxe? Like a quarry? Yeah, a quarry. That's my definition of a hard job. (laughs) Maybe you're working in a quarry, or maybe you're working as a server, or maybe you just went to college. It's like, Mm -hmm. along the way. My bad. Very good. Along the way, you know what I'm saying? Did you do a good job of of doing good? I like to think that's what makes a person fucking end up in those positions where they're having that really great life. I really fucking hope so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just matching that vibration or putting that out there with that intention. of Yeah, just being able to cultivate the good life regardless of your situation, your external, doesn't matter. Right. Put you anywhere. It's like, all right, we'll be okay. Like, I'll make, I'll make good come out of this or whatever. Right. That's all. That's all I fucking... Can you put that on a stat board? Yeah. I, was, I don't think IQ is attached to that. <laughs> no, IQ is I not so. attached to that. I don't think so at all. No. Nah. I don't think so at all. That's the thing. Mm-mm. And I think that that's like a... We don't measure that. You know, we don't We don't look at that. I think that's the Bible. You know what I'm saying? The the fruits of the yeah. uh, of the tree yeah. defines the tree. You know? Because mm-hmm. I met a guy. I met Coach Trailer, And I just like... 
didn't meet him in a situation where he was like talking to me, but like introduced, you know, shook his hand, talked very briefly and then just watched him engage with other people and like be at a dinner. And, you know, I was just like blown away with how rich that guy's life was like this. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna come after me or anything like that, but just like <laughs> the, the way that he described his relationship with his wife and with his kids and his wife was there. So like I saw to some degree their relationship, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the energy in the room, the way that he told his stories, the points of view he had, the stories about his kids, like the, the, what was happening, like the actual scene he was in. I was just like, dude, this guy's life is like, this is beyond having a good life. Like this is like a, like a really high level RuneScape player or <laughs> like, like a really, really dense chocolate cake. Like it's so rich. It's like you have chocolate cake, but that's like cafeteria hospital food chocolate <laughs> cake. Like that's fucking sheet cake. Like that's, mm. that ain't chocolate cake. This is like devil's food cake, but it's actually angel food cake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, it just, it hit me. Cause it was so, I was like, what is he on? What the fuck is it? How do you get that? How the fuck do you end up in that? Yeah, it wasn't that you wanted to be a coach. Or that it, yeah, because you did, but it's it wasn't that that got I don't you know, here. I mean, you, you, you. Me? Yeah, yeah, looking at him. Yeah, no, I didn't want that. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want his actual position. Mm -mm. I wanted the way all of his all of his life tied together. Everything that he was a part of was like lined up. Yeah, and all of the, the, all the people, his kids were doing these interesting things, and they had these like, you know, one of his kids is an NFL football coach. That's tight. Crazy, man. That's badass. Not only that, but then his story as a coach was, like, tumultuous. And he had to, like – there was, like, head coaching changes and staff changes. And he thought he maybe he should take another offer. And he stayed and he waited it out. And then now he got promoted. And now they look at him really highly. He's well paid. And I was just like, this is crazy, bro. <laughs> this is cr – I'm looking at – most people, like, fucking – their kids are working at the library while they're going to college. Like, <laughs> like it was bananas enough that you're sitting here with your whole crazy life story. And then you've got these kids with this crazy life story. And then your wife's this crazy supportive person. And you guys have been through thick and thin. And I'm just like, man, just blown away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Someone living like a really good life. It's a like good life. Yeah. It made me realize that that's something that can like, that's like being rich. Like, do you want to, mm -hmm. you want to grow up being broke or do you want to grow up being rich? It's like, well, I want to be rich, but not like, you know, in a weird way. But I'd like to, I guess what I'm saying is like, if you're a kid and you say you want to be like, when you're, when you're an adult, do you want to be rich or do you want to be poor? It's like, definitely want to be rich. Yeah, I'll get a good job and I'll fucking do a thing or I'll be an athlete. It's like the same thing with this though. It was like, oh my God, I could have a life where I'm like, everything is really intense and awesome or, and makes sense and is connected and people respect me for it. Or I can be like, what, a drug addict? It's like both of those things are on the table. That's fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> that scary movie. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, for real. Like, if you're not able to cultivate the good life, then, like, the bad life is fucking right there waiting for you, bro. Motherfucker's on the side of the street. It's like, oh, my God. Looking under the overpasses and shit. It's like, dude. Bro. I don't think I'll ever stop being sensitive. That shit is jarring. You see a homeless person, that shit should jar you. I, I think we just look at it like it's like, you know, oh, yeah, there's the fucking guy in the corner. This like, should be <laughs> you should be jarred. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> they need a shower. Whoa. Like, God damn. That could be you. That, that could be. That could be you. It could be. It could be, man. I guess sometimes mental health is at play. <sighs> yeah. But God damn, bro. Fuck. That shit's scary, bro. Fuck that. It's very scary. Dude. So yeah, anyways, with that being said, I really want that rich life, but not in a weird way, but just like yeah, rich life. Yeah, man, I want to fucking. What does that cost? What does it take? What's the? I think we're doing it right now. It's proper sacrifice. That's the only thing we got. That's, that's the best. That's the best method we found. Yeah. Proper sacrifice will lead to a good life. Yeah. Telling the truth, proper sacrifice. So many perspectives. Is coach Coach Trailer might have been annoyed to be there that day, under the surface. Could have gotten in the car and said, Whew. okay, glad that's over. Done with that shit. Now I can go home and do what I want. Go over film like I want to. Or I can go prepare for next week like I've been wanting to. You mm -hmm. know, like a real coach or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's you know, he might have been not having even a great time in that moment. He might have been like, man, the stuff you sign up for when you when you do this life, you know. <laughs> but like, who knows? He, I, he didn't display that on him. But I'm just saying it's so crazy how like all of the, you know, the guy, like, in the house with the kids in the small, small house, being happier than the guy alone in a mansion. It's like, well, is the guy in the mansion just alone for a little bit? And then he's going to meet a great wife and he's going to be really happy. 
Or is he going to meet a terrible wife and he's going to be really miserable? Like, what, 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 what is all happening? All the different angles of perspective. It's all so crazy. Mm-hmm. It's all so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late, but damn, man. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Oh, it happens fast. It happens fast. I mean, I don't know, but I assume that's how they get there. Do you ever wonder? That could be a scary movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, as you mentioned, like mental health and then familial relationships, or not even familial, just relationships with whoever, whatever. Fuck, could have been a bad marriage, took all the shit, and then you just in a depression, alcohol, lost your job, and then just boom, 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 like three steps away. So I'm just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. At some point in time, bro, I feel like you gotta, you gotta be like, I'm gonna go ask for money. Like, you tell yourself, you're like, I'm gonna go right on a sign. Because I don't feel like, because in my own mind, I always feel like they just got stranded somehow. They're like, they got th- kicked out of a van. And their family <laughs> said, we're done with you. Just the moving van. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cross-country tour. You don't know where you're at. So yeah. You dropped off in Oklahoma. Yeah, your wife was driving and she said, filing for divorce. We're actually moving to a different house than the one that I told you we were moving to. Get the fuck out. So you don't go, don't go look for me there. I'm not going to be there. Never going to see me again. And by the way, your job fired you too. <laughs> so maybe he quit his job. So he's literally like, you know, stranded homeless guy. Mm-hmm. That's like what my brain wants to conjure up. But in reality... I don't think so. No, I think it's more <laughs> drug related. <laughs> yeah. Right. A little more druggy. Right, probably. They definitely... Maybe not all the time, but I think they're, they play a role. Yeah. Alcohol or whatever the fuck. Worst case scenario, you have no one you can stay with. Like maybe both your parents have passed away. No family in the area. No family in the area. No car. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Man, I, dude, walk to, to fucking your local lubies, put in a job application. I mean, that's what I, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. But I also understand, so you get the wrong person in your ear, it says, dude, I made $300 on corner of West Ave yesterday. $300. I'm high right now. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm going back tomorrow. I'll be high tomorrow. <laughs> It's fucking good. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, it's scary, dude. So that's what I'm saying, though, is that somewhere along the line, I think you make the choice to go out there. And I just like, I mean, goddamn, have con- I, I don't know if you should have conviction about this, but I've got to have conviction about something. But I'm not fucking doing that shit. I'd rather, like, just find a Work way. anywhere. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked up. I'd rather try to, like, ask to borrow a suit or something like that so I could fill out applications, mm-hmm. give the suit back. Yeah. Like, go to Goodwill and ask to borrow a suit. I don't know. I, don't, I get fucking creative, dude. I get fucking crafty in that bitch, dude. <laughs> I figure it out, dude. <laughs> because fuck that, bro. I mean, everyone's got a line. Something they won't do, I guess. And for me, that's one that every time I see a homeless person, it's just so jarring. I'm like, just wrapping my head around. I'm like, no, that can't be me. Can't be me. No way. Mm-mm. It could, but no, I, I won't let that. I can't, I can't let that happen. Fuck that. That's super scary, bro. Like, I don't think anyone's, no one wants to be there. You know what I'm saying? No one's aiming for that. You just happened to get there. Oh, oh. That's terrifying. <laughs> I'm jarred. I'm jarred. <laughs> it's, jarred. it's like being fat, bro. Mm. No one wants to be fat. No aiming at that. No. Yeah. Just get there. Just get there. It's like aim at something. Yeah, aim at something. It's like you develop inability. Mm. Don't develop that. Yeah. Don't develop inability. Uh. Uh-uh. Nah. Nah, fucking do, bro. Fucking do, bro. What are we talking Even about? Even if it's wrong. We talked about everything, huh? Yeah, we're talking about politics, Diddy, transgenderism. Oh. Talking about the baby. Yeah. It's about killing for something. Yeah. <laughs> talking about self defense. Yeah, true. It's a lot. Something too. else. It's another reason for me to be more of politically vocal. What a, being politically vocal doesn't help. No one fucking cares. <laughs> But I think you should know what's going on, right? Yeah, just knowing, knowing what's going on for sure for your own self and then maybe trying to spread that information. <clears throat> yeah. At least, like, politely. Or no, what am I trying to say? Like, cordially? Don't be fucking spamming people on Facebook or whatever. I think but with your own kids, I'm fucking... That's that's where it's important. That's well, where it matters. Welcome most. to the school of Matthew, dude. Yes. Right? That's why it's important for you to be in, uh, not engaged, but in the know. Yeah. For your kids and your household. Yeah. More so than for other people, for sure. And I don't you, can't, wanna, you can't control other people. Can't. You can't do it. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry about it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They're going to listen to you. 
But yeah, dude, you want to want to wind her down or? No, we're going. <laughs> I'll blow the pod with y'all forever, never, never, never. But this is probably our longest pod to date. Good God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're pushing. How much time we have over here? I, I miss you guys. I miss the Justin Pods. I'm podcasting yeah. with some guests lately. Yeah, we're getting the guest spots up, getting the viewership up, just spreading the audience. We got yeah, we got a heavy, heavy listing of pods coming up next week. We're gonna be hitting it starting on Saturday, actually. Yeah, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, oh, Wednesday. Jesus. <laughs> Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're gonna be hitting it. And then other shit along the way. But yeah, man. More life, more everything. It's crazy. It's going by fast. Life's flying. It's already about to be December. About to be the next year. 2025 is already. We're tomorrow. getting old on camera. We're getting. <laughs> yeah. like, we watch right. back some of our old pods in a, in a couple of years. Like, oh, shit. Some crazy. young bucks. Never go to them. That Michael Jordan arc. <laughs> the Arkies. Well, yes, man. It was a uh, episode 66. 66 of them things. Keep Dude. it on pushing, baby. Follow us everywhere. More content, everywhere. more music, more podcasts. Everything. All the socials. We're getting we're getting out there. We're getting more engaged. We're getting just getting smarter, getting better, just getting better at everything over time. Just more information, more information. And then just implement, implement, implement. And it's more information, more information. YouTube's crazy. YouTube's crazy, yo. You can you can learn. Everyone's trying to fight for your attention. The way they win is if they legitimately add value. So it's like if they if you can go around and find the right value, it's like you're good. They want you to watch. And you, and watch if it's good. <laughs> Those be, continue the cycle. Yeah, it's so weird, it. dude. A lot of it is like great hook, mm-hmm. title thumbnail hook. <laughs> dude, the titles are good. It's mind. Check your titles. It's mind blowing. <laughs> watch your titles. The hook. The whole nine. We got more life coming. I'm not sure what's going on in your story. It's perfectly our time. Right where we need to be. We keep on pushing. Until the next time. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where.